Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGEN, episode number 155. Oh man, 155 of these, and who knows how many point one twos, threes, fours, five, six, seven, and eights we have done. We are getting ready for Quantum Miami coming up next week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Let's freaking go. Uh, that Quantum is going to be being brought to us by Phantom, um, also known as FTM or Phantom Opera. Layer one. Um, really like some of the solution pieces they got. I'm really excited about uh, some of the DEXs that are building out on Phantom. Um, some really cool opportunities there. <laughs> mm, excuse me. And a really awesome um, experience. They make it very, very easy to do. Um, so tonight, we're going to be sending out some quick invites real quick as we go on mute. As always, you know, a moment of silence for our non-existent sponsors. Maybe we could get a sponsor or two down the road, but that's all right. Uh, as we send out some quick invites, uh, shout out to Jetman. We see you there. We see you there. Um, we're going to go on mute for just a second uh, while you come up on stage and we send out some quick invites. We'll be back in just one second. And we are back. We are back. And uh, we have an awesome guest up with us right now, Jetman. Uh, Joshua, I hope you are well. And we have Abraham joining us from somewhere in the world. I hope he is doing well. We're ra I see that raging bull that you got going on there, sir. Uh, your, your Yacht Club Labs has been kicking it. Glad to see that life is good. Um, Jetman, how are you doing? I'm good, bro. What's good? Man, it has been a crazy day here in New York. Uh, I was at a New York blockchain event last night, uh, with co sponsored by Blockfills and MexC. Um, and then uh, another one tonight, uh, by Blockfills, and then the it was the New York City blockchain meetup. Uh, so that was pretty good. And then, um, yeah, tomorrow is off day, and uh, a final. I'm gonna actually be able to finish up my notes for our meeting to set up a meeting and a follow up meeting with you and me. Um, and then uh, got some throwing, uh, hosting an event, and throwing an event Saturday night. Um, and then getting ready to go to Miami next week. Well, there's a whole lot that's happening, and good thing you got everything figured out. Well, that's beautiful to know. What's up, Abraham? What's good? Did you invite yeah. him up to speak yet? I did. Yeah, no, I did. Uh, Abraham is, I have known Abraham uh, coming up. It feels like it has been a lot longer than it has, but known Abraham uh, just about over a year now. Um. An amazing community man. Um, talk about a go-getter. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. He is somewhere between you and me in the world right now. So, um, not sure. Because I think it's, what, 2 a.m. for you right now? 5.36 a.m. Sir. What are, are you? Please tell me you're just waking up. Yeah, I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming and joining for uh, your taco bite. Yo, like you know, most of the times I I just wake up and I'm seeing your messages, 
where you sent me an invite to join the spaces. And, yeah. you know, the good thing about your spaces is you don't take a lot of time. It's basically like almost a 10 minutes, 20 minutes stuff. So, well, it was good. I was like, okay, today I just want to be intentional about joining your spaces. I'm already up doing my stuff and boom, the moment you invite her, I just had to help on, you know. Well, hey, thank you so much. Yeah, no. And then, you know, that's one of the cool things is sometimes Taco Bites is quick, easy, and over. Um, other times it is, uh, you know, hours. Um, it all depends on what's being sort of covered and what's sort of uh, up and about right now, which, um, you know, today, you know, just sort of looking at some market pieces, um, looking at some NFT pieces, and seeing what's go what's good, you know, as uh, there's some pretty cool new things, especially with Polygon pushing out Edge. Um, it, uh, you know, Magic Eden is is sort of up in its game. So yeah, but uh, yeah, no. Um, this Taco Bite, you know, um, big things was in a great space earlier today talking uh metaverse um you know uh with uh, some uh builders of mine um metaverse architects and they're like they're bringing that game to a whole nother level of, of, of con being connected in in the metaverse and, and connecting businesses that are wanting to be in the metaverse um i don't know it it was pretty awesome to get a hand clap and a hundred and a hundred from, you know, a couple uh, signs uh, dropped from uh, Decentraland. You know, I, um, I've gotten to be in some pretty cool spaces and, and been brought up to some pretty awesome experiences, you know. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. Getting a high five sent from Decentraland, highlight of the day. I think I saw you in there, too, for a second myself yeah i didn't know um uh i thought you, you, you might have come on a, are you there yeah i'm here i'm here yeah didn't you hop in the, in this afternoon i think i did but today um yesterday was freaking busy for me you know yeah and uh i see altitude club joined altitude club i was just talking about the space today uh would love for you to come up and, and talk a little bit more about what you do, um, the Millionaires Club, and uh, what's what's happening on your end of the metaverse. And one sec, I, I wanted to say uh, thanks for actually talking about Zen on the other spaces. You know, that was like an eye opener. And since researching about it, I'm pretty much vested in on Zen token. So. I believe yeah. it's got potential, and uh, I love the fact that the founder is hi freaking hyperactive. He's almost on every Twitter spaces, talking about his stuff. You know, yeah, Jack is Jack is pretty cool. Um, Zenzu as well. Um, I don't know if you've hopped in the Telegram group yet, but uh, I was hop I hopped in the Telegram group chat for a little bit tonight when I was on the subway, um, and they did. You know, uh, I you know. Those that have been around for a moment with Zen, you know, have moved over from using multiple wallets to mint to using like batch minters through like Coin Tool, um, and that's sort of where Jack was like, "Well, hey, you can go use batch minter, you know, through Coin Tool, or I can make the same exact thing as a collector NFT that is then liquid, so you could then future sell it as well, so you can create those liquid assets." based off of future future income. So um, the next big move I see um, outside of the Ethereum NFTs right now is Polygon. And the only reason I say that is because when they were when we were doing test network on the Ethereum NFTs, there was also work being done on Mumbai, which is uh, Polygon's uh, test net. So that's sort of where I think that that might lead to next. So some big moves there coming up, I think. Have you got any project that you're looking at currently? Token-wise or NFT? 
Um, last like token for us, then maybe NFT. I told you about my, myself and my NFT shit, you know? Yeah. So uh, token wise, um, I'm watching the, the high rise of new meme coins again, um, especially within Solana, seeing um, the, the Bonk and Franck is really picking up from the community side of things. Um, and then at the same time, Samo is, is making a little bit of a comeback. Um, where I see some really cool movement is on Radium in some of the, the concentrated liquidity pools that's, that's going over there um, and the trading pieces that are really coming in. So there's some, I feel that there's some good stuff coming up. Um, but as always, you know, where if you're looking for the solid pieces, I'm looking at, I'll add a lot of the layer ones and layer twos. Um, you know, I, I, I highly suggest people use uh, Axelar, which is a bridge uh, for bridging because they're getting ready to launch a token. Um, I suggest people go do Arbitrum and use Arbitrum and do the their their Odyssey quests. Um, so you get to know, um, that, and then I also suggest people go back and use optimism and do the odyssey quests there, um, because they're getting ready to take another snapshot. Um, that, that, that solidifies you for airdrops, but layer one tokens like, uh, polka dot, um, I think is, is, com is going to be a really big thing. You know, there's some interesting things with. Uh, the hard fork that Polygon just had um, yesterday. So going to, you know, deep dive into seeing how, what might, might be some issues there. I think a lot of sites are going to be having to update RPCs manually. Um, so there might be some slowdown on transactions for a little bit on Polygon, but I think it will pack, pick back up. Uh, Polygon will blow up in my opinion closer to Q2. Um, and so there will be a jump in Matic price, I think near the end of February and middle of March due to uh, Utes migrating from Solana to Polygon. That's, uh, that's my token piece. Um, as far as NFTs, um, the rise of digitals is coming. So art projects and metaverse projects that, that hold NFTs uh, membership pass projects that provide um, both the one-off events, I think, are going to be big, big pop-up. But then also um, the ones that are doing like music events are becoming really big, like Wobble Bugs, um, because not only are they providing access to events, but they're providing uh, what's the word? Like Wobble Bugs is providing a record label for up-and-coming artists, so that the funds get redistributed to the token and nft holders um and then liberty square has something crazy coming up i don't know they've already done three drops and it's been crazy to watch that happen and see that go um and so they have something else coming up up their sleeve which is i just you know anything that comes out of liberty square right now has been fire um, and then the slow burner on the back end has been Trip and Ape Tribe, and then uh, the Aces back over on ETH, uh, formerly known as the Whitelist, has some cool stuff coming up. Um, but also, you know, I, I got to give a shout out because he's here. Uh, Yacht Club Labs, you know, uh, with Crypto Bulls, you know, uh, check out what they are building, you know, that would be. All right, yeah. so uh, I, I don't know if you can actually put some of these in the notes that you're preparing for our meeting. And uh, um, I wanted to tell you that Abraham is listening. He sent you a DM, and you've not checked your DM. So it's 5 a.m. <laughs> where he's at, and so he can speak right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, no, I... Abraham, I, I love you, sir. I see, I saw, I saw the, I saw the hands. So, um, I will, uh, under, totally understand. Um, but yeah, no, thank you for joining Abraham. Uh, altitude. What's well, good boys. <clears throat> I, uh, 
I don't know. I think uh, I think my business partner Zach was on a space with you guys earlier today. Um, I was just up night checking some some late night DMs and getting some some stuff shot out to some people and saw your link and was like, oh, let me jump in here and see what's going on, see what you guys are talking about. Oh yeah, no, we you know it was a great space today. Um, we had Revel Realm, uh, Decentraland, uh, DWC. You talking about the Meta the Meta Architect space? Yes. Yeah, I was on there on my personal account. Zach was on the uh, the Altitude Club account. So okay. You guys, you guys might know me as Good Mood Food, but uh, okay, I'm here. So what's uh what what are we talking? I heard a little Zen talk. I was uh I was in Zen on the uh the early the uh the early minting. <laughs> okay. Are, yeah. are you are you are you still minting or have you have no, you? No, I'm not. I'm not minting anymore, but I'm still holding it all. I haven't. Uh, I haven't sold any of it. I think it's got, I think it's got some potential. I mean, I'll be honest. I haven't like kept up with it a ton, but uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's a free mint. And to me, it's worth more to hold and see what the project does than it is to try to get, you know, a hundred or 200 bucks out of it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it's way it's worth to me more as a moon bag than it is to, you know, cause I think, you know, bulls in a bull cycle, I think Zen could do some crazy stuff, you know? Oh, definitely. Um, and, and like so you you were around then when it's expanded to 10 chains now no what, is it really yeah so it is on uh what is it it's on eth polygon bsc um moonbeam uh evmos uh phantom uh proof of work and uh doge chain and Okay, Y. Okay, Z. Okay, X. Okay, X. Yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting, man. Like, I, I like stuff that's different, you know. Like, and yeah. uh, you know, it's it, it was an interesting concept, you know. It was uh, it got yeah. my interest, and I'm like, well, hell, what? It's a little bit of gas, nah, no biggie. Yeah. Let's see what let's see what happens, you know. Yeah. DeFi block. I see your hand up. Yo, Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen. Number 155, getting ready for quantum. What is this space about? Tonight we were talking about Zen Metaverse uh, and uh, Q1 event. Q1 of um, 2023 event. Yeah. So that is where we are at. And then um, the the Altitude Club uh, So was part of a space uh, – Co-hosted for a second, millisecond, uh, then stepped over so that uh, we got everyone in. But uh, it was basically talking metaverse uh, consortium. You know the the next the next level of, of of metaverse, you know, advocacy in in a way, but also just partnerships because people sort of gawk at the number of people using the metaverse but then what they forget that there's over thirty thousand metaverses being made right now uh actively being used so you know <laughs> now you can build your own and then there's going to be the people that will help you build those but um uh, as we were sort of talking you know you know in in the next two years you could expect a twitter space where you know we're in the middle of something and, you know, as I said today, a giant taco comes walking out of the ocean, you know, shooting laser beams from from my my hands. And then I'm like, welcome to Taco Bites. And I'm like 50 stories tall. Right. So. So there, there needs to be a. Um, NFT event maxi group. Because. I, I really thought in back in 2022, I really thought events were the best thing that NFTs were about, you yeah. know, because NFTs could grant you exclusive um, unlockables, you know? Yeah. And so if you had an event, if you had an NFT, if you had a community, it just made sense. Um, I got some, I got some, uh, so I did a poll. I did a poll of have you guys had good more good experiences or bad experiences in Web3? And I got more negative feedback on that. 
So I don't think I don't think Web three I don't think NFTs is like it's just filled with rug pulls and and frauds and scams. Okay. So, as a developer who's been in Web three for since t- two thousand and nineteen, I really think that the development that needs to occur in this space is Web four. Okay. You, heard of Web4? you know what that is? I've I've heard of Web Four. I see Alt has his hand up. You can say something. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's, a, you know, doing a poll like that, right? Is a uh, it, it's tricky because like you really have to look at the timing of it, right? Like we see this, we see this after every bull cycle, right? So the bull cycle brings in a ton of new investors and. Unfortunately, a bull run does not require education. So, you know, it, when you come in on a bull run, you can literally throw money at almost anything you want and get 10 extra money back out. And what it does is it trains this whole new group of investors to not do research, to not understand how projects work, how tokenomics work, what good projects look like, what good teams look like. And that, that market of people throwing money is ripe for scammers right? Because you have a bunch of uneducated investors that are throwing money that anything that sounds good. And so when the bull or when the bear inevitably comes, which it always does, a lot of people leave crypto forever. Right. And those people are, had a horrible experience because they bought the top of the market. They didn't do anything to educate themselves exactly. and they lost a ton exactly. of money. Right. And that's, that's, and, and that's just the cycle we go so through. And then what what we've seen, though, and I think this transition has really started at the beginning of this year because we saw so much negativity through 2022. And I, from what I've noticed, just being in spaces and being around DeFi, to me, I, I've noticed a like a tangible energy shift in the narrative since this year started. I see I used to go on spaces and listen to 40 projects pitch and out of the 40, 37 of them were trash. And three of them were like, sounded like they had potential. Right. But now when I go on spaces, I, I hear 20 projects pitch and 18 of them are being built by incredible people. And so it's like, what we're seeing is that the people who are still here and building are proving themselves to be builders because right now there's no money to be made in building. You're, you're essentially, we're all working for free to some extent or the other. And I, I think that, I think it's just a natural cycle that crypto goes through right i mean i think you're just going to see negative market sentiment i don't necessarily think that that reflects entirely across web3 you know i think that there's going to be scammers anywhere and I, I know that this is kind of a hot take controversial opinion to some degree but what we need is regulation it's what we need if we had regulation to some extent it would eliminate a lot of these problems that we see you know i mean half of these projects out here are are straight violating securities law like but because there's no clear-cut rules and regulation right now they're allowed to do that and it's it's literally like the wild west out here so as soon as we get regulation and you see big financial institutions able to step in which they want to if you think that charles schwab and jp morgan and these massive venture capital firms don't want to diversify into crypto they absolutely do but they can't because they have no clear rules on how to do that and how to operate within the law so as soon as we see that, I think you're going to see a massive reduction in the scams because it's going to be much harder to scam people. And I think we're going to see a massive influx of new capital that's going to li- – like those big companies coming in with big money are going to build legitimate products that are going to give confidence to retail investors that don't know anything about crypto and only know what they see on the news or read in a magazine and think it's all a scam. And really until we get there, I think we're just going to see a repeated cycle of – Builders building, those projects do incredible in the bull run. All the scammers come in to capitalize on the hype. A bunch of people make money, but 10 times as many people get screwed. Those people hate crypto. A very small percentage of them stay. And DeFi slowly, crypto, Web3, whatever you want to call it, slowly grows a little bit with each cycle as some of those people stick around. But until we get the until we get the regulation and the rule sets, I don't think we're going to see the mass adoption that we all want. Right. And so I want to see a bull market, a thousand X. I think we all do. Right. But it's just that 
it's the it's the people who have lost money in the bear that it's really affecting, which is a majority of people. So let's say, oh yeah, there's a bull there's a I, bull run that I'm gonna I'm can yeah. can I I wanna speak on something on that because like one what is what you know, you, you say a thousand X, okay? That's gonna be awesome. I don't think every project's going to do a thousand X. And the reason why I don't think that is because what they're, they're sort of like um, the good projects. I feel like, you know, if you look at them at like peppers, you know, there's those super hot, spicy peppers. They fucking hit you like a train and then they, and you know, you're, you're crying and then they're gone. But like (laughs) where I think you really want to look for long term. Because and making money, not just making that quick buck, but making real money. Look for those like Indian spice type of projects, those ones that just come and they just sort of slowly burn. And then you feel that for the entire meal. And then you need to drink some like of that. Like, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like a yogurt milk stuff that sort of like calms it down at the end. So the, the spice burn goes away. But then you know you have to go wash your hands before you touch anything else because you're going to just set whatever you touch on fire. Because if you're looking for a thousand X across everything, you're going to miss. You're going to miss the thousand right. X. I mean, you know, Bitcoin. But you're also going to miss that. Bitcoin 10X. won't, you know, a thousand X. Um, but m- yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe something else will, right? Yeah. Go. You, so. You want to go find a, a token that has a lot of zeros to lose. Go look at Zen. That would be my suggestion. Read up about it. There, it's on eight chains. You know, it, you're, it, the only tokens that are in existence are the ones that people have created. So you literally have to put in the work to create the token. You go put in a claim ticket, basically. Like a, you, see, you, see, you put your place in line point. for how long you want to work my for. Point, my point isn't about making money in cryptocurrency and the next bull market and you know 10x 5x whatever that's not my point my point is that it doesn't matter that the whole market you make money you you know and you can liquidate it's that people are just going to pump and dump regardless and i don't think the pump and dump culture is even good for web3 to begin with so then that wouldn't get a so a pump would lead to a thousand a pump and dump would lead to a thousand x now unless you're talking about over the next ten years you know then 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 you know yeah, but if you're looking at the next year the next cycle so the thing about there's cycles a, is they come and they go that's ha- supposed to happen in twenty twenty four and mm-hmm. that's that's next year well, so to say the next ten years is like skipping over you know um so there's 19 million bitcoin in existence there's roughly 2 million more bitcoin that are going to be produced in the next 127 years so 2 million bitcoin versus the 19 million so mining wise the scarcity of it is going to be and that's where bitcoin is different to say 100 years you know is there's so much that can happen in those hundred years that it's not even it's not even worth discussing. Neither is and I and like looking for an a thousand x project isn't all you got to do, you know, ten x ten times and you make a million bucks. Yeah, but then you, you know? then you dump it right. You you pump it, dump it. No, you 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 go you you take your money, make ten bucks, ten x, you cash out, and then you go move to the next project at ten x, you cash out. See, but that's the cycle you just, though. That's the cycle that people. Get. That's that's a that's a trading mentality. That's that trading mentality of great man, ten x, a hundred x, pump it, dump it, in and out. What happens? What happens in one year? And you gotta and you gotta spend all your money, and you gotta start all over. That's exactly what crypto is meant market, for. It's not market. not it's for you to get out and to spend it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, get out and spend it. People want to get get stuck with 
buying and selling and trading and that's that's not the purpose of it yes it is it was literally meant to make to create trade well, that is a financial transaction or a transaction of any type is a trade between two two people as a currency or as a um just a what, whatever you want it to be. It's the intrinsic value of it. Right now, the intrinsic value is, you know, um, the, the, the monetary value. But if, if and I'm going to make up a very absurd, uh, you know, argument here, but let's say I, I, I could give you a phone. We're on a desert island, and I could give you a phone with a with a with a wallet that would be all yours that has a thousand Bitcoin, but you haven't drank water in like four weeks. Well, uh, four days. Who knows when you're gonna get you know water again? You know, or I have a gallon of water that will last you until the boat comes. Right. So, and th- and that's another thing is intrinsic value. Sure, Bitcoin has intrinsic value that make it you know worth twenty thousand or whatever it is right now, but I'm I'm thinking the extrinsic value of like you said if I'm thirsty I'm going to trade that one bitcoin for some water. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Altitude. Sick. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting discussion. I mean, I I'm going to give you a hot take here. Crypto has zero value whatsoever because you can't do anything with it at all except buy it and sell it and trade it. And the reason that money has value is because it has the ultimate utility, right? I can use money to directly trade for goods and services that I want. You have to think about money as an accounting system. Blockchain is just an, a, a better accounting system. That's all it is. There's, there's only three things. There's accounting, and then there's goods and services. That's it. Money is simply a way to transport the value of your labor force across time and space so that you can then trade it for the goods and services that you need. Right. But because crypto has no regulation, we cannot trade it for the goods and services that we want at all, except for very obscure, you know, weird forms of utility that we see emerging. Now, do I think we will get there? Absolutely. But as of right now, the value of crypto is in what people believe it is. That's that's all there is to it, because you cannot do hardly anything of relevance to your life with it. No, no, I, I, I want to disagree with that altitude because there's a lot that people can actually do with crypto at the moment. Even from Binance Pay, you can actually use crypto to recharge your phones. You can actually use it to pay for your travel. You know, there's a whole lot of utility that's been built already. And uh, crypto is not just useless, you know, it's, it's, it's I, become I, useful. You know? I, so we're, DeFi, we're going to go to you in just a second. Um, Jetman, I agree with you 100%. I think Altitude was sort of basically saying the same exact thing. You're, you're, you were talking about the end result. So it's being a transactional service. So goods and service, charging your phone is a good and, go, you know, goods and service. I know in, in, in other countries, you know, crypto is used a lot for peer-to-peer transactions due to monetary inflation um, and just you know, there. Um, I met a guy the other night who they're using. You know, blockchain, like he said, you know, is a ledger, so transactional history and proof of that. And so, like they're doing um, in in countries that don't have good paperwork, um, NFTs for land title deeds, and they're getting government approval for that. And so that's really cool for the ownership side. But it's like it comes down to. It's just a very good ledger. What you, whether you define that as an ownership ledger or a financial ledger, um, it's basically who has what when. Um, and, and I agree with, so both of you, I feel, are saying the same exact thing, just different pages of the same book. DeFi. The first McDonald's to accept Bitcoin is in Switzerland. And um, so... There are companies accepting Bitcoin for foods, for food and water, right? For for drinks and, you know, goods and services, goods and services, right? So yeah. that's that in Switzerland, a McDonald's um, and McDonald's is an American made company. 
So then the question becomes is why wasn't the first McDonald's to accept Bitcoin in America? Right. And then the answer, that's, the answer to that, that, is that comes down to mostly regulation. regulation and that's yeah. where altitude was, what is, I agree 100% with altitude. What we need is at, what true is the rest of the world has attempted to either regulate or regulate crypto out. One of the things, and so people have had to learn how to work within those boundaries. So I, the one I thing that the U.S. So, hasn't done is lay down clear right. boundaries, so people don't really know how to work. So I agree in it. with with um, the auto, with Alt and also Jet because they're both right. Jet was saying that you can buy foods and goods and services with Bitcoin, and it's only getting better. And Alt was saying that cryptocurrency is worthless unless it's being traded um so like i was saying web3 encompasses all these things that we talked about and a lot more people have been scammed in web3 and have been rugged in web3 so i'm thinking that the innovation that must occur in web3 is web4 so let's hear your def your full definition of Web four because I know you sort of touched it on a second, but this is one of those arguments to where the Web four to me might mean something different than it does to you. So I would love to hear uh, your full definition okay. of Web four. Full definition of Web four clearly defined. There's only really one definition of Web four. It's a cross platform, multi chain XR. Okay. Deep dive on that. Okay, cross platform gaming, Fortnite. You can you can be on the PlayStation, Xbox, and PC all in the same lobby playing in the same game. Cross platform gaming, Battle Royale, Warzone, right? That sounds like a metaverse to Apex me. Apex Legends, Apex Legends. Um So then that that what you so what what one of the things that I'm hearing from you there uh, is a solution that's already being built by Pocket of Quarters DAO, um, and that started five years, five ago, years ago when right. Fortnite came out in two thousand and seventeen or something, two thousand eighteen, two thousand yeah, two thousand eighteen. Yeah, so so this dad, uh, Mike, he started Pocket of Quarter Pocket Full of Quarters DAO because um, his son was a really good gamer, yep. and his son would then earn assets in different games. But then, when he was Apex done, Legends came out he couldn't. He, he, he couldn't. He couldn't move. He couldn't move those assets from one one platform to right, another. Right. And so, one of the things that the Pocket of Quarters DAO is doing is take bringing Web two games into blockchain, so that there's a there's a there's a stable token. You know, one coin. One you go to any arcade, it's quarters. Quarters will get you into any game, and in that game, will have you will have any any piece of action, you know, anything from Mortal Kombat to Jurassic Park to Smash Bros to swipe it. Right. So that's the first you know? part. The first part is cross-platform video gaming. The second part is multi-chain. So a lot of metaverses like Sandbox and Decentraland, they have their own native currency on that platform like sandbox has sand and decentraland has mana yep so multi-chain would be you would have all the cryptocurrencies in one metaverse well they they sort of are they're both erc20 tokens erc20 tokens right right decentraland ethereum so the so they, the ERC, they, they they're all they're all interchangeable, they're all interchangeable. you can go on to any 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 decks yeah and you can trade Twenty dollars for twenty dollars minus fees. Exactly. Transactional so, so fees. That's, so, so, so that that's already, it's already in place. It's already in place, right? Cross platform is already in place. Exactly. You're proving my point. It's already in place, which means Web four is already here. Um. So Web four, I think, means something different than it does to you than it and does then to XR, me. And then the last part is XR, and XR is is not yeah. just VR, like the MetaQuest Pro VR headsets. It's um mm -hmm. AR too. And mix, which is mixed reality. Yeah, and so, so the central land isn't in the um, VR yet. So uh, you can use VR for Decentraland. You can use, you know, 
Uh, we were talk- literally talking about this this afternoon, you know, both uh, AR and, um, you know, full VR. But where, so I'm going, this is where, this is where I, I, I will be honest that I'm going to use this to strike up more conversation, but this is where I'm going to say where I feel that I'm going to suggest that you redefine Web 4 um, because Web 4 um, talks about bringing it to another step to where there is, you know, assets are tracked on chain. And, you know, yes, they're, you know, so not only are distribution models, so basically using on chain algorithms to better define routes for uh, shipment of items, you know, so you know exactly on chain what items are where. Um, you know, you would think that of a hundred years of, you know, plus years of tracking things, you know, just within the U.S., I think, uh-huh. I think uh, that, you know, we would have a better so, Taco, do you, asset do you management. Have a VR headset? Uh, not anymore. Okay. So if you have the MetaQuest Pro headset, which costs $1,500, and you could go into Decentraland in VR, that that's that's pretty much where for because Decentraland already does a lot of that multi chain stuff. And but that's no so web Meta web Pro four is, is the more of a more the next step of decentralization, which would then be AR. So the MetaQuest no, Pro so is, it, it's 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 it. This guy that I um I don't remember his name. His business card is purple and it's horizontal rather than vertical. I remember that um, had one of the best definitions of Web four, where the information that is put out is more decentralized and almost real time, not fact checked, but gated against the community vote almost. So you know, like especially in the in the lines of media, um, things that value, because uh, one of the biggest thing you know the most what is your most valuable asset. Probably my MetaQuest Pro has set. No, you have something more valuable than that. I mean, that thing's worth a thousand five hundred dollars, but um, what? your attention? Oh, okay. What does everyone fight for? Attention. Yeah. So, uh, Brave. I don't know if you use Brave, uh, Brave browser either for mobile or desktop, but they introduced something called Bat, Basic Attention Token. Basically, you are rewarded. For, um, for your attention, so Web Four really will be the value of your attention monetized, the value of your information monetized, the true ownership of your information monetized. So, think of you know I'm, I, I use this as an example for DIDs and SSIs, uh, digital identities and self sovereign information, uh, I, I self sovereign uh, identities. You basically get to control. So, have you ever used Revoke Cash or a uh, token revoker through Etherscan? Nope. Okay, so le- one of the things that you can, you do when you work with DEXs or you work with uh, certain sites is you have to give approval to that site to use your money, and then that way you're giving that 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 platform <laughs> access to your your information to your wallet right. to to that that currency to that token or whatever um you can go and revoke that access at any time right now let's say you go to let now now you go to a a club you know yeah and i'm gonna make a story here this is this is a story because i've used this you know it's very apparent with with women you know and um you know you go you know a woman goes to the club with her id when you're going in the club what information do they truly need to know about your ID? Age. <clears throat> that it's yours and that you're over whatever specific age. They don't need to know anything else. I don't know how many times you've been in a club line. I worked security for a long time, and I'd have these hot shot you know, guys that work in the door because we're slammed or something like that, and a girl comes up, and he's looking at her ID, and he's like, oh, you live over on Height Street? I live like three blocks from you. I'm going to might stop by sometime. How many times do you think that was information that was not supposed that not needed? Right. Exactly. You know? I agree with you. But let me. And so with, with self-sovereign information, two things happen. One, 
once that door knows that, that you're of that age, cool. That's all it needs to know. And then as soon as you're through that door, you're good. You can revoke that access. Right, the same right, thing goes right. like with health information. Yeah. You so don't own your health information. I'm trying to put this in So Web4 is true ownership of, of your information. Okay, great, great. I think Web3 is already doing that. But to put it in perspective for you, the MetaQuest mm -hmm. Pro headset is a VR headset. That does yep. some AR stuff um, like face tracking. It tracks your whole face. If you blink, if you smile, if you frown, it has face tracking capabilities in VR. It's I think it's actually the first VR headset that has face tracking, which is why it's so expensive, right? So if you could be in Decentraland in VR with a face tracking uh, VR headset... That is then Web4, you understand? Because it's it's cross-platform. MetaQuest Pro didn't make Decentraland. So the interoperability of two, two different companies now connected in VR, that's Web4. But, but to be, I mean, just to be fair, like, that's that's no different than me logging into an Activision game with my Microsoft Xbox. It's just the VR iterate. I don't think that that is a big enough of a revolution to constitute Web four. Okay, let me take it. Let me take it a step further. I'm I'm in the MetaQuest Pro VR headset on Decentraland, and I'm in a Twitter space in VR. Okay, in Decentraland. But that's, that's not really that's Web 4. That's just an extension of Web 3. That's three different yeah. platforms all together in the same in the same space. That, we could do that right now. That's we could what do, I mean. We, we could do that two years ago. You could just, just the, the how many Meta people Quest would Pro, show up? The MetaQuest Pro has that came out November of October of 2022. For public, yes. Um, but so I, I'm no like DeFi, I will be honest. I think we're splitting hairs. We're slightly on. We are, we are talking the same shit. We are, we are on the same page. I think you're just sort of saying the future is now versus and trying to change what we're not even technically, we're not even at web three. No, you said it. You said it yourself. We already could do that, right? It, yeah. It's already been done. Exactly. The fact that it's already been done just means that the innovation that hasn't yet occurred is Web4. Maybe, maybe I'm looking at this wrong, but like it, when you, when you have a new version of something, right. And like the example that I'm going to use is like uh, data processing for cell phones, right? We had one G one G gave you, wireless calling. We then had 2G. 2G added text messaging into that mix. That was a major step forward. Now, not only can I call you from anywhere in the world, but I can send you a text message from anywhere in the world. Then we had 3G, which gave us rudimentary internet access, which was another huge step, like massive revelation forward. Then we had 4G, which is what basically most of us know as the modern smartphone technology. And now we have 5G, which I still haven't quite figured out exactly what 5G gave us. But aside from my point, I think what you're talking about with things like interoperability and cross-chain, and those are things that already exist inside the currently developed model of Web3. And I don't think that that's a large enough revelation or step forward to constitute calling it quote unquote Web4. I agree with what Taco is saying that we need some major step forward like Average civilians and retail investors actually owning their data. That's huge. That's a massive, massive step forward. Because right now, data is controlled by a small subset of huge corporations that literally have access to all the data that comes out of the internet. And when we take possession of our data back, that's a massive step forward. That, to me, would constitute like a Web 4. But I think that a lot of what you're talking about, while it is major breakthroughs, I think they're still all encompassed within Web three, and I and I would agree with that. You know, okay, like because yeah. DeFi, like 
one of the things to where like your your you know what's really hilarious with my name people compare me to um ready uh, ready player one a lot and i and i and i like to tell them that i've had this name and i'm old you know older older than the book um and so where more of like where what what web four more will be towards and or not even web four but web 3.5 will be you know as we're talking about ownership of data but people being able to use that okay. data that you own well, two, to better serve you i want your guys' opinion on the first thing is you said web 3.5 right and mm-hmm. when you say web 3.5 what i think of is the board Ape yacht club other side land metaverse where it's a nft metaverse you know i mean does that is that web 3.5 would you say no in vr no that's no that that's that's the it, it it's no different than than any other vr right now other than it being the other side deed because that was so like, there, there's that was like the first nft project to say that they're coming out with their own metaverse. No, it, it was not. With the Board of Yacht Club? Yeah. Don't want to be rude, but I got to go, gentlemen. Jet, hey, thank you so much for joining us this early in the morning, and you were never rude. <laughs> thank you. Okay, let's, let's say the Board of Yacht Club wasn't the first NFT project to say that they're coming out with the metaverse. Okay. So my next point is, if I had a baby, a lot of people say, oh, Web3 is in its infancy. It's just the beginning of Web3, right? I mean, I've heard that. I've heard that every day since 2023. If I were to have a baby born, it would be... Did you just say every day since 2023? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I I heard it yesterday. Oh, Web3 just started. Oh, it's Web3 is in its infancy. You know what I mean? I, I get tired of hearing that because... If I had a baby now, my my baby would be a Web4 baby because my baby as an infant is born into Web3. All this stuff going on right now is Web3. So when my baby turns 10 years old in 10 years, I guarantee you I'm going to I'm going to be I'm pushing Web4 right now. I'm telling people. So the the post that I pinned to the top it's the history of like the internet web one, 1985, 2005 took about 20 years for that to really mature web two, 2005, 2015. That took about 10 years to mature web two to web three, 2015, which it really started in 2016 when Ethereum and MetaMask came out and smart contracts and all that stuff. So from, Pretty much 2015 to 2023, let's say now, that's seven years. That's Web3. So Web4 is is now. So if I had a- because Just because you're, ha- you're doing halvings every five years doesn't mean that it, it's, it's, it's now. Because... Uh, uh, when you when you when you bought your, uh, I'm gonna. Do you have a net Netflix subscription? Yeah. Okay. Did you connect your Web three wallet to pay your Netflix subscription uh, to Netflix? No. Okay. Did you? So before we get to Web four, mm-hmm. before we even fully get to Web three. Interop- just like you were saying, interoperability of all platforms. So if all platforms are not yet interchangeable and you still have to use your Google account uh, to your PayPal, which is tied to your credit card, to pay your Netflix, that's still Web 2. Well, the thing is, I bought Netflix you- back in 2000. And the first time that I bought Netflix, I was in college, mm-hmm. which was... okay. Like- 2000 do you, do, you, do you use do you use Zelle to pay people? Yeah. Have I've you used used Zelle? Yeah, I've used Zelle. Okay. Do you know how many layers of of permission there are between um you and me? Let's say let's say you had a million dollars in your bank account, you had your bank account for 30 
30 years. You never had any issues. You have a perfect credit score. And you wanted to send me $50. Through Zelle. Through Zelle. Okay. How many layers of permission are there between you and me? Um, sending me 50 bucks. A lot. How many? Well, if the point you're trying to make is that there's a lot, then... There is. Then, you know, there's you're, seven. you're trying to say that you want something with less steps. So, uh, I'm going to... Um, yeah, so it's your money. Why does anyone else have to give you permission to do what you, what you want to do with your money? Well, that's the, the I, answer to that is security. I mean, you don't, you don't, no, you don't no, want anybody, that, it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's control it's security because you don't want anybody to just be able to send your money as you please. No. So the, the way layers of permission go with Zell, you give permission to Zell. Zell gives permission then for your bank. Your bank then gives permission to Zell. Zell then gives permission to the money transfer. The money transfer then gives permission to the receiving Zell. That Zell then gives permission to the receiving bank. That bank then gives permission to the receiving Zell. That they all at any one time could say, no, we don't want that transaction to happen. Not to protect you, but to say they could say no. And, right. and it's and See, but the and, thing and so is, though, if you want to pay your bill, your rent or your electricity bill mm -hmm. or your water bill, they don't they don't even use Zelle. They just said, give me cash or give me a check. Right. So ACH, uh, uh, you know, and let me, payment let me ask system. You a question. How many permissions are there through with cash? Cash? Oh, cash is still king because $10 will still be exactly. $10 no matter how many. But what you can get with that $10 will be less. Exactly. So let me ask you a question. Would you rather use cash or Bitcoin? Bitcoin? Um, to pay your Actually, bills? I'd rather use ETH. It depends on how much money you're trying to transact. To pay your bills. Yeah. To pay your bills. I mean... In all reality, like we're not going to have any of this stuff until we have direct fiat on ramps. I mean, yeah. right now the, the big the big holdup is the centralized exchanges that you have to go through. They're just digital banks. That's all they are. And like until we have direct to fiat, like where you can have your paycheck deposited into your MetaMask, none of these issues are going to get solved. And the only way that we get to fiat on ramps is when we have central bank digital currencies. It's the only way it's going to happen. So. I, I agree with you in one, one aspect with CBDCs on that aspect. Where I disagree, it, well, where I – CBDCs will be the, the major cascading point of getting people into Web3. But I, I, where, where we then go is – so we talk about the dollars again, cash – so CBDCs will be cash, but as they're being written right now, uh, they will be the same level level layers of permissions and censorable uh, than than any other uh, any other chain or transaction, and that's where they're they're scary. Um, uh, Hundred percent agree with you there. And yeah, so, I mean, looking at looking at what BlackRock is doing behind the scenes with Aladdin, um, you know. Powering the financial markets and being the the solution, the the, the mathematical solution. So, you know, mo the bigger piece of of Web four then would possibly be, you know, as I'm brain farting into my into my thoughts right now, and I apologize, you know, where you're interacting with AI and you don't even know it, you know, and not only are you interacting with AI, but you're interacting with a friend in the metaverse. And you go on a walk down a street and you hear two people talking about this car, this Ford Mustang, and you overhear them and, you, and you're like, oh, I really like, I didn't know that about that Ford Mustang. I'm going to get one of those. But what you didn't know is that those, those two people that you thought were, you know, other people in the metaverse talking about the Ford Mustang were really AI 
that were having a conversations with each other about the Ford Mustang that were placed there based off of your habits within the metaverse and where it sees your on-chain activity. Now, that's where shielded payments and shielded activity can really come into play and that ownership of your information and being able to revoke the access to that information. And I bring the Ford Mustang conversation up simply because I was having fun at a uh, Mexi uh, party last night, a uh, networking event in New York, um, where I had a chat GPT uh, talk to chat B uh, GPT2 um, and convince it to buy a, a Ford Mustang. Yeah, so, I mean, you're really you're really talking about the future of advertising. Oh yeah, I mean, it's 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 definitely like a scary thing. Like when you consider that you know you don't own your data, and that the companies who own that data will have immense power to you know influence you in ways you can't even imagine. And then the pieces that will come along with that. Then, well, I see your hand, DeFi. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop because I, I was about to go off on 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 a deep tangent. So, DeFi. Chat GPT. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. I think Joe Rogan did a podcast on it, and uh, he said that Chat GPT, the time that it took Chat GPT to get a million users, is fast. Is the fastest that anything has ever got to a million users in history before. Which just means that AI. This is the beginning of. Chat GPT and AI, and you know AI is old tech, right? I mean Siri. When did Siri, Apple Siri, came out? Two thousand five or something. You know what I mean? So but Siri's not AI. There's a big difference. No Siri. Siri is not AI at all. Not even remotely. Siri's AI. How is so, Siri not AI? Siri follows commands only and doesn't do anything outside of the box. That's not intelligence. That's programming. It has, it's a big difference. It has voice recognition to understand. That's not that's, intelligent. That, 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 yeah, that's not intelligence. No, no, that's no, that's on, code on, and, on, and on, human on, learning. Guys. Voice recognition to understand English language. You can ask it anything and it will generate an answer. That's intelligent. It, no, it's that, not that's, that's programming. It's, it's not aware of its, its environment. Not, it's aware that it, 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 you're speaking English. It, but what it does, it's all it's doing is literally typing your your question into Google, and giving you the answer. It's not, it's not it's not creating an answer no. based on the you next say, best hey, thing, I things say, of hey, thoughts. Siri, right now on my iPhone, and it says, "Hey Siri, how's it going?" And I said, "What's the, what's the weather like?" Um, you know, I can ask it anything. The fact that I can ask it anything. But but you're 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 mistaking referencing of a program and referencing of information to intelligence. And they're very, very different things. No, I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure that. So, so like, let me, like, let me give a perfect example. Cause like AI is something that, that I'm, I'm fairly into. So if, if I set, let's say, let's, let's say I, I set your VR headset on the countertop in your kitchen and you have a robot in your house for that robot to go and pick up that VR headset it has to be in the exact place that that robot expects it to be. And that robot's going to follow a pre-programmed path to where it expects the VR headset to be. It's going to pick it up and bring it to you as long as you're in the position that it expects you to be in. So that's not intelligence. That's a robot following a pre-programmed path. Hey, sir, intelligence, are you but intelligence is where I can set the headset anywhere in my home and say, hey, robot, go get my headset. And it will look around the environment figure out where the headset is at and how to navigate the space within it, find that headset and then bring it to me wherever I'm at in the house. That's it being aware AI. of its environment and making an intelligent decision. That's AI. It's much different. I, than I, a program. I, I, can I, can I, one of the one. So I looked up the definition I, of, I asked is Surrey AI I said, yes. You know, I mean, it's as simple as that guys. Um, D five blocks. Uh, I'm I'm going to. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to put a big red sign on that and say no. Um, it, I, Siri is n not AI. Um, it, it, you know, 
in in every fact of the word. I'm ta- I'm going to take altitude. I'm going to take your 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 piece one step farther because um, w- one you know mapping. Like I look at my old iRobot, you know, it, it it follows a pre-programmed path, but it also will define what the environment is and map it out. So it will, I, I can tell it to go clean the kitchen and it will go clean the kitchen. But following that same line of thought, it is following a pre-made program because it had to go map the environment. Um, AI will be where I will say, go to the kitchen and get me a cup. And it will look around the environment without having to map it out and me tell it where the kitchen is. And it will under recognize which room is the kitchen and it will use either deductive reasoning or it will do trial and error and know where that cup is. One of the things that, you know, uh, a big separation of AI, AI has been in the process for a really long time. I've gotten to meet David Ferrauchi who is one of the lead creators of uh, Watson. Um, I've, do- I've gotten to meet Dr. Ben G uh, from uh, Singularity Net, and I've gotten to talk with uh, Sophia the Robot you know, AI. I've gotten to talk with Grace the Robot AI. Um, you know, Dr. Ben is- has been working on AI for like two decades. You know, the only thing that I, I don't understand yet that he's done – uh, is go use uh, the network speed of Cardano to build a net neuro build a neuro network for his AIs to communicate on. Um, I I don't know why Cardano is I I don't know I don't see the specialness within that. But hey, uh, I also can't create AI. But at the end of the day. AI is really built off of math and, and learning and being able to do the same thing that, that you and I do, learn from our mistakes, and then also change what we're saying based off of our environment. So like if I were to be getting a whole bunch of thumbs downs, I'd be knowing that like what I'm saying isn't making sense or a lot of people disagree so then I would either say, all right, cool, tell me where I'm wrong or how I'm, you know, what's different. Or I'd be like, man, I know you guys don't agree with me, but this is, this is, this is where I'm sticking my, my, my flag in the moon. DeFi. So there's sophistication levels of AI. Voice recognition is, is um, that functionality. Let's say it is or it's not, right? But using your example of if you can tell a robot to go to the kitchen and grab you something, it, it 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 doesn't just run into the wall. It has to create a path to the kitchen so that it doesn't hit anything on its way. Once it's in the kitchen, it has to know what's a cup and where's the cup. And then it has to move its hand in order to grab the cup and then go to wherever you are. It has to find you and it has to go to you and it has to give you the cup. So that whole process is made up of multiple functions based off of your just one command. Right, so, but I mean, what you're what you're talking about is simulated intelligence, not actual AI. The AI is machine learning, where this thing gets smarter and learns on its own without additional programming from a human being. That's the main difference between what we consider AI today, like things like Siri. Siri only gets smarter if somebody makes it smarter. Siri doesn't get smarter on her own, and that's but the, the difference. database. The database. Let's say, let's say, sir, the database, the database is updated. And so it, it's, so every time you update your I iPhone, Siri, Siri, because it's, it's getting your answer from Google. But here's the thing. Siri is smarter than you because it, it has, has access to Google. Because it has all the answers. It has access to all the answers. I have Google in front of me too. Okay. Yeah. Right. But that uses voice recognition to to answer all questions. So that doesn't make it 
that doesn't make it intelligent and that doesn't make it self-aware and that doesn't make it able to dictate it's based aware. off of what you're saying to think next chat it's gpt a, it's can it's aware based off of voice recognition that it's being told to do something right but, but voice recognition is incredibly simple we could have had voice recognition in the 1950s like that's not a a, a revolutionary technology yeah, it's not. I'm not saying that it is revolutionary AI. I'm just saying that we've been had Siri for ten years, twenty years now, or you know, whatever that, whatever, whatever that came out. Right, but you're standing on voice recognition as something to qualify no, Siri no, as AI, what and I'm it doesn't. That it's been ten years since Siri came out, and that ChatGPT is what is currently trending and is making record-breaking numbers. That's because chat GPT is the first retail accessible thing. That's very, very close to actual AI. So it's making so, a lot of waves. So what I'm trying to get at is how we, how are we going to innovate upon chat GPT moving forward? I mean, chat GPT is going to kill or, or the technology behind chat GPT is going to kill millions of jobs that much i can tell you a hundred percent not not like what so there was so one of the cool things with chat gpt there's two things that siri like so um what's i, I just i just i just dug this up you know siri the the voice actors that were the original siri voices were recorded in 2005 they weren't used until two those voices weren't used until 2010 so Siri's voice that you hear was recorded in 2005, but it took them six years, and then it was released in February of 2011. So where chat GPT makes difference, you ask Siri to write you a program, a computer program, it cannot do that. Chat GPT can. You ask it to build, ask the code for a website that is football themed, based off of, you know, with this color tone, based off of this piece, it will, does, it will give you the, it will write the code out in front of you. Have you, Bla, DeFi, have you had a chance to play with, uh, with chat GPT? Yeah, I, I like chat GPT a lot. Um, I'm, I so, use it, you know, I actually prefer, I use, I prefer chat GPT over Google, over anything else, but chat GPT well, doesn't have voice recognition though. There, there's people that have made APIs that integrate chat GPT with, with voice to text, but I just do want you to know that they shut off uh, chat GPT. Uh, they shut off its access to information in December, 2021. So every if you ask it, what happened in 2022, it will it it literally will make it up. The difference between Siri and ChatGPT, ChatGPT is has the ability to lie to you. And you can tell Siri to play 80s hits, 80s rock hits, right? You can you can ask ChatGPT to make an 80s 80s song, rock song and it will make a make one up for you. Yeah, but you. it won't play, it won't play it for you. You can go because it doesn't need to. Well, that's isn't that AI? I, if you tell if you tell Siri to play that, me, but no, they uh, they like they that's 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 the that that will be the next the next piece that people are okay, building right, right. now. So someone's is, building a customer service chat bot for text messaging. So Apple was making a VR headset on the yep. cloud. Apple made the first smart watch on the cloud. So the cloud itself that Apple made is fully backed by the Siri AI. So it's, I guarantee you that Siri over the last five years has gotten smarter and better. With updates because the base with programming updates, language right. has with updates D with the cloud, with all this. DeFi, I, I, I like, uh, man, you, uh, I will say this. You have a bit of knowledge on a lot of things, which is an awesome thing. What I would ask, one, being a leader today, you have to step boldly 
And the great thing about being a leader today is if you are a leader, you have people behind you. So either you are laying, you are putting the footsteps on firm ground and you are finding the next step. Or if you start to sink and fall, you have people behind you to catch you if you're being a good leader. But what I would suggest to you, I, I, you know, um, I know, I know a little bit more about, about, you know, uh, what the altitude club is about. And I know, I know who, who's behind it. Um, you don't need to know me. I've been in blockchain for 11 years. You know, I'm 38 years old. I made my first website and I got into my first bit of legal trouble when I was eight because I was making websites that gave access to paid paid delivery services for free. Um, and the internet back then, there was very few things that paid services were for. So, yeah, but I would suggest that we're, we're not trying, I'm not, I'm not calling you dumb, but I'm saying that you are off on, you're approximately right. But what it can do is I feel that it can lead you astray going down that path because you will have people listen to you. And then when they, when they do a little deep diving to learn more because you spark that, you spark that interest in them. That's one of the best thing leaders can do is spark interest in others and you spark that interest in them. And so, and they realize, and, they, and then they realize that they're, that you're off on, on enough things that it throws you into, it casts you into doubt in their mind. And that will take you down 20 notches faster than, you know, so I, I'm not saying that you're a hundred percent wrong. I'm saying you're off and, and I would, I would ask that you, that you listen to the altitude uh, on, on this piece. Can I rebuttal? Uh, th there's no need to rebuttal, but respond. Yeah. Like, well, this isn't an argument. Okay. You know? So this account is doxed. Um, you know, I do have an un undoxed account, but this is my main project, DeFi blockchain university. And as a web three dev, who's been a Web3 dev for a few years, I've seen the good, bad, and the ugly of Web3, and, and that's why I'm developing Web4. And, you know, the whole follower and leader thing is I'm trying to escape that, you know, because I'm trying to present factual data and research, right? Everything that I speak to you guys is factually based off of data and research for the last 20 years. So, you know, to say that I'm right, I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm a hundred percent right about everything all the time. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm a human being, right? But I'm uh, just take what I say with a grain of salt, because the most important thing in web three is education. So many people are buying and selling cryptocurrencies and NFTs, and they don't know the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. They don't know how a proof of work, a mining rig, hooks up to a node. They don't know how a staking mechanism is like a security, right? So I'm just trying to educate people, man. <laughs> I mean, education is great, right? Like, I, I don't, I have no, no quarrels with you on education. I think that educated investors make better decisions, right? Ultimately. Um, but one thing you, I, I do want you to keep in mind as, as someone who's clearly building something and who I, I like, you have a ton of passion, man. Like, and passion is, is something that is, you're kind of either born with it or you're not, right? Like passion is something that you can't really teach somebody. And so that's a valuable skill that you have. Um, but to add to what Taco was saying, that passion influences people and it makes other people passionate, which is a good thing as long as you're pushing them to be passionate about the right things. And 
you know, education is super important, but at the same time, you have to think that the average retail customer, the average person does not care how things work. They know they just want to know that it works, right? Like I don't care how my watch works as long as it tells me what time it is. And I think that the vast majority of crypto powered things that we're going to see people that are using them every day will have absolutely zero clue or idea how it works. And they don't care to know as long as it works. So education is a slippery slope because there's a lot of information that I see from educational platforms that's being taught to investors that yes, while is it good information to know? Sure. Is, is there a negative to them knowing it? No. But is it going to actually benefit them in the long run? Probably not. And I, I, I see it all the time. And it's like, yes, is it good to know how staking contracts function and how nodes connect and all this different stuff? Well, sure. Like, there's no downside to knowing that information. But it's not really information that actually benefits anybody in the long run. And so I'd rather see – I would rather see education platforms focus on the material that actually helps people make smarter decisions and not material that – is ultimately just stuff for them to regurgitate in a conversation later to make themselves look or appear smart or educated. And it's, it's, it, it, to me, it doesn't really translate into a positive outcome unless the information is very focused on things that actually make a difference for people. That's just my two cents on it. Uh, I will, I will agree with that piece. You know, like I said, DeFi, you know, it, uh, being an educational piece, I, I 100%, and I see you time. I'm Come on up, sir. Um, I, like I said, being an educator, one thing, you know, comes with this, you know, you have a community, you have people behind you to, to, to catch you, but you also have a responsibility to them. And... and uh, I, I think, like I said, man, you you are talking, you you're approximately right on a lot of things, but then you're off just enough that where it sounds good in a conversation, but you inspire that person to go go learn some more. They'll be like, "Oh no, he was off," and then there's enough stuff that builds up. I just want you know. I want you to pass on good information so that you be a leader and that your, your word is gold, you know, and right, you should, see, not, you shouldn't I'm ask for this. it to be gold. I'm you should know that it's Twitter backed spaces. up. I'm not in these Twitter spaces every day trying to be a leader. I'm trying to make the space a better space. And as an education maxi, so here's the misconception, the centralized education system, is flawed because the U.S. I, I pin something to the top. It says the U.S. national debt reaches an all-time high of thirty-one trillion dollars. The student loan debt crisis in America is in a trillions of dollars. Student loan debts in a trillions of dollars a debt. So, in, in when the economy is in a recession, in a depression, and people who have degrees can't get jobs because of the U.S. national debt is at an all-time high. Something's obviously flawed there, right? I mean, we can all agree to that. D hey, DeFi, I I'm gonna, I I I'm gonna let you continue that piece, but we now you're hopping around. Which is why, hold on, and 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 and, 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 and no, one one thing that I like that, that 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 you just said that you're not in a lot of Twitter spaces. So one piece of etiquette: if you are not a host or a co-host. It is to ask if you put if you can put something up on the on the on the billboard. Well, make me a co-host then. No, I said you have to. Uh, okay. Asking to put something up. All right. Well, can I put you know, something? It, it, sure. What do you What do you want to put up? Okay. So back to the misconception of centralization and decentralization. So a decentralized. But, but now you're moving topics again because we were just we were of talking what? AI. And and. Uh, like, no, I'm talking about Chat GPT, and like, like Alt said, it's gonna kill jobs. Yes. So it, it's gonna move into a decent decentralized DeFi space. That that's not that's not that's not 
the the meaning of DeFi. Once it kills jobs, I mean, that's some, not decentralization. You think you think you think if something kills a bunch of jobs and lays a bunch of people off in the economy and the recession and the debts at an all time high that people that, are that's not decentralization that people aren't going to want to know of who's to blame. Yeah, but all technology kills jobs, but it creates jobs at the same time, right? Like, perfect example is the Industrial Revolution. When cars came around, what do you think happened? One of the biggest industries in America was horse breeding and carriage building. All of those jobs died when Henry Ford invented the assembly line and could mass produce cars. All of them. All of those jobs died, right? But guess what happened? He created thousands and thousands of new types of jobs, and people either had to transition and learn new skills to fit the new economy, or they didn't. And that's how technology's been from day one. You know, TV killed radio. Like, it, it's just the internet is killing TV. It's just the way that it goes, right? Like, so yes, do I think that AI will kill tons and tons of jobs? Absolutely. But it will also create new ones in the process. Okay, but at what point are people going to start killing people? That's already happening. And that, already that, happening. that has exactly. nothing to do with this. It's already happening. You're, so DeFi, so DeFi, you, DeFi, DeFi one of the that. things that DeFi, talk, I don't want to mute space, you, man. sir. I don't want to mute you, sir. But all you're starting to do is when one topic is being becomes a discussion topic, you, you, you're going to a new soundbite almost. And, 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 and whether it's to, to – we, we 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 were gonna like I know the conversation line because I've been in a few of them that are really good on what Ch Chat GPT is going to do might do to jobs and what kind of jobs it's going to produce. But then all of a sudden you're like people killing people. No, like we, we like that shit. We can talk about that all day, but that has nothing to do. That was way before blockchain. So I'm talking that about was currently though. It, it, People kill people because the day ends with why. I'm talking about DeFi, Web3, scam. No, so, so now you're trying to villainize something that I feel you do not understand. No, I understand. I mean, that's your I opinion, don't. I do not I feel that you do. You, you, you think that I everyone think losing their job is the defini definition of decentralization. No, I did not say that, and I don't believe that. That's sort of what you were laying down and I think you're previously. Wrong. I think you're wrong, man. Boy, so then, so then hey, time. I didn't. Welcome yeah, no, up. No, no, no. I, I, my bad. I was just, I was agreeing with you were saying, Taco, because I didn't understand what you were saying, Defi, at all. I, I thought that's what you just said. No. So, uh, would you like me to restate what I said? Please. All right. So. The negativity of Web3 scams and, and FTX and rugs and people rug pulling is where is a problem. And the solution could be ChatGPT and AI. <laughs> and as Alt said, ChatGPT is going to kill jobs. And as you said, people are killing people already. So what I'm saying is nothing new to nobody in here. We all already know this stuff. So but what, but what I'm struggling is to see how you're connecting all of these things, right? Like people kill people. True they're statement. Chad GPT. True statement. Like, but I'm not, I'm failing to see the connection of, of how you're, how you're connecting these things together to make so a point. They're already all connected. My point is that, that to innovate, the future is Web four, but that doesn't make any sense. How can we? How can we get to Web four when we're not even in Web three? A hundred percent, we're not even there. We're, we can't. We can't sit there and say that we have everything a hundred percent in Web three already taken care of. That we don't have to. That we can go to Web four right now. We can't get people to understand Web three. How can we go to Web four, Web five, okay, any, any, anything, anything else? Chat, how can we Web three? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, that, that's my point. 
But what does that have to do with everybody understanding it? That's that's the scene. Like people have to understand. People have to understand first in order for them to have their own opinion and decide how they want to go forward. In order for them to understand how they're going to go forward and decide, have them have that have that knowledge. They have to be taught that. Just like you have to be. Chat GPT is already here. It's already learning. But it it's not. But become, but you're not. But 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 wait a second. Wait a second. Chat GPT has better. nothing to do with with somebody yes, learning. Yes, it does. You, you, you're not, you don't. Do you code. learn from Statchebby? Has it taught you yes. something? Yes. Yes, it has. It t- it taught me how to code. But don't you have to go back over it? No. You can't. You can't. You can't just sit there and place it right in into. In, in, you can't just copy and paste it, and yes, all I of a sudden it's just running 100 percent, right? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah, you can. So Chat GPT didn't teach you how to code. You 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 asked it to build what? Well, it's a long conversation, first of all, and it starts I, with. I, I don't know. I don't know. We've we've been going for for an hour now, but it feels. I, I will be. I will be honest, DeFi. It what what I'm hearing a lot, is, and. And I, I'm happy, like, I'm happy to have conversations with you. I'm happy to share what knowledge I have. But what, I, what I'm hearing a lot is statements, retraction, and then semi-regurgitating what's told back to you, you know. So and, 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 and so, like, it, it was first, you know, uh, you know, I'm just, you know. So I've used ChatGPT. If you haven't used ChatGPT, then you do, wouldn't know what I'm talking about. We we've all used ChatGPT. Okay, and if you've used I've, ChatGPT, I've used, you I don't, know. I, you know, I've used it for for multiple things, and, and I. ChatGPT Chat is like an employee. If 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 I need to build a wooden box and I don't know how to build a wooden box, but I can call somebody that knows how to build a wooden box and they come build it for me. They didn't teach me how to build a wooden box. They built a wooden box for me. Chad GBT is the same thing. If you tell Chad GBT to code something and it codes it for you, that didn't teach you how to code. You hired someone to code for you. Chad GBT is like an employee and has to be thought of in that but sense. The thing is though, I could see it write code right in front of my eyes. But that doesn't mean you can write that code. Just no, like I can, I can watch the guy build a box, but it doesn't mean that I own the hammer or the nails or know what type of nails to use or what screw to use or how to cut the wood at the proper angle well, to get it to match up. I'm a visual learner. If you but see that, somebody that, build a box, that's irrelevant. If you build, if you see somebody build a box, can't you learn from that? And, and I, I can probably build a shitty box, but I'm not going to build the box the same okay, guy, yeah. box that the okay, woodworking build guy built. Box. Let's say you build a shitty box. Okay, well, make it again. Make it better. Okay, great. You you made it five hundred times, ten times, however many times it took you to to make a shitty box into a good box, but you learn from that, right? But you learn from your trial and error, not from the woodworker. Just but like you learn if you learn to code, like uh, that's what college is. You learn from somebody else. You apply what you learned. It might be shitty at first, but through trial and error, you learn, right? So, um, DeFi, this is this is this is once again where you are backtracking on on what you're sort of saying. Have you now written? I don't. What, I don't know what you had Chat GPT build for you. Have you now done it five hundred times, and can you do it without Chat GPT? And so then the question is, um, if I were to say i want you to to write something uh, i don't know what language you said you had chat chat gpt i'm just gonna say chat bot because i hate saying gpt over and over again so chat bot um you know so this is where you're talking about that you've had it do something and out uh altitude was was right on is you're having someone else build something for you whether or not you watch them do it, and you're a visual learner. Has nothing to do with code because so code. I've I've been to a coding boot camp. I've tried to learn from scratch, 
And yeah, I mean, I learned some stuff from that. But I also took from ChatGPT and I learned from that too. So I'm not saying that one thing trumps everything else. I'm saying that sometimes you got to pull from multiple sources. I'm, and that, and that's a part of doing your own research. Pull from multiple uh, sources. Hey, um, yeah, I you know, this is this is one of those things where, you know, um, DeFi. I, I you know I feel that that you have a, a little way to go. You know, you always start every journey with one step. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what events you are going to this year. Uh, do, what, do you have any events that you're planning on going to this year, stateside or worldwide? Well, I was trying to make the NFT Seattle event last year. I'm trying to go to that this year again. Um Maybe NFT, uh, ETH, they said ETH Denver might be one to go to. Uh, you know, I mean, just the big ones, but I was. If you make that- it to ETH Denver, I would love to, I would love to meet up with you and have coffee. And I would love to, you know, uh, you know, yeah. So I, I you want to get into any layer one, uh, coding camps where you can get be taught how to code. The, your way, your style, um, where you're learning from a human because coding is more intricate than, you know, uh, learning how to code rather than being an AI that can, that knows how to code. Um, you know, I would love to meet up with you in East Denver. I will be there from the 23rd until right. the 6th. Um, okay. But well, until can, then, the with the I would, I would, I would, I would suggest that you go back, not into Here's student the- mode, but like, TA last mode. Year, so last year, all these events that happened in 2022, I'm sure they were all great events, right? Um, you know, you've been to a lot of events in 2022. What I was hoping in 2023 was that there was more events and that they would be pretty much more events. But you, we don't need more events. Or better. Like, are they they're getting better? So the question is, what what are you looking for out of out of an event? So I, I really wanted to um be there in the metaverse. There there's you can go to NA me- meetings in the metaverse. There are events going on in the metaverse twenty four seven. Right, but I'm talking about big events like Ethan. There, are, uh, that's going to be because one of the things that Time talked on before he he got disconnected uh, was that. You know, we're not even there for everyone to be there. And so one of the things that these events mean is for access to as many people as possible. And so they 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 do live stream them via, I think it is uh, a YouTube. So, um, you know, there's there's a couple of the events within ETH Denver that are going to be uh, via Metaverse as well. So they're already happening, but they're they're hybrid events. Metaverse and IRL. Yeah, great. You know, I mean, it doesn't even have to be in Denver, man. I'm in the metaverse every day. I mean, I'm you know, not. We... Okay, I see. I, I play my Pokemon Go and I, I'm happy with that. I help do certain projects within the metaverse, but what I do in, yeah, in well, life. Well, because, you know, because Meta, Facebook, right? Instagram. The, in you know in the metaverse, it's more like personable. It's like I can you know have a cup, co- I can have a cup of coffee with you, you know, like it's in person, in the metaverse. That's not that's not as in person. To, you know, flying because I'm from California, as opposed to getting a plane ticket, getting a hotel. So if you're in California, then I will see you at NFT LA. Uh, Same, my, my brother Taco. And, I'd love to meet up, dude. Definitely. I'm going to be so right now this is my my Q1 um uh travel plans Quantum Miami uh from uh the 
uh, next week, so leaving Monday, and we'll be back Sunday. Um, and that's a, a huge shout out to Lady Daydow um, for that. Um, and then I'll be uh, ETH Denver, uh, Wallet Con, Decentral, uh, Interlope, and uh, Supermoon Camp all in Denver. Um, right and and ETH Denver as well. Then I'll be heading to uh, South by Southwest, then uh, GDC in San Fran, then NFTLA, then possibly Atlanta X, and then ending Q1 and My oh, NFT you do, Miami. You're doing a lot of flying there this year, then, huh? Driving. You're driving to all these places. You're driving cross country? Yes, sir. Wow, that's incredible, man. Um, I got to get going here, but. I'm collabing with people in Twitter spaces, you know, um, so, you know, I'll follow you guys, DM you guys, let's do some more spaces, we could talk more, we could build more. Uh, happy, happy to, to, to talk more and, and, you know, but yeah, um, thanks for joining tonight, DeFi. Before you go, DeFi, I ask since you since you've told everyone what you've sort of done, Zach, and you have gone. been you have been a, an amazing person. Oh, he's gone. I was gonna say, I want I want you to go over what you do, dude. Professional hat off. Holy shit! <laughs> God, always damn. wear the professional hat. Always wear the professional hat. Bro, I mean, I'm like, you know, I, I'm a pretty reasonable guy, right? Like, I have these conversations with people all the time, you know? Like, and and it's just like, I, I just, I hate the, like, going around in a circle. You know? Like, I'm all for productive debate. I think that that's where all progress is made through productive debate, right? Like, I love conversations like that. And I love hearing people's opinions and, like, Cause I learn and I get, I grow and I get smarter and more educated and like, but like the whole, just like going around in circles thing. It's like, how do we get somewhere where like this benefits everybody, you know? It's one of those things to where, um, it's worked enough for, you know, for them to learn. And, and, you know, like I said, it's one of those things to where he'll, he'll learn from, unfortunately, he'll learn from someone coming back and, and, and calling him out. And then it will bring everything else he does into doubt. Uh, you know, I think a IRL event for him will be amazing. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll have a, you know. Um. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm stoked to do some big IRL events, man. Like I haven't got to do uh, like any big major events yet, and so like I'm really doing everything I can to get to NFTLA. Um, okay. I've, I've had a lot of people that are like, "Man, you got to come to NFTLA." So I'm I'm uh, really like excited about it. I've done some local events like here. Like I got to meet um, uh, Lehman Baird, founder of Hedera. Um, okay. So I got to do, uh, a, like, I don't know how familiar you are with like, cause we're on avalanche. So, you know, I have a lot of avalanche connections, but like, um, you know, potluck labs, which is one of like the biggest NFT groups, like on AVAX, um, yeah. you know, they launch all kinds of projects. Th those guys literally live five minutes away from me. Awesome. So, yeah, no, I know, um, this, this is sort of, I know, um, one of the, the, the lead devs creators of avalanche and I know his dad, um, nice. I, 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 I really like avalanche. Uh, you know, um, I want to try to figure out some more D gen shit on, uh, Avex, uh, X chain. Um, but you know, it's not what it was made for, but I think that there's going to be some fun D gen shit there. Um, uh, a friend of mine, Roman, uh, he's coming out with savvy, uh, DeFi. Uh, they're building on avalanche. Um, and they're they're in test net right now, um, and I got invited to uh, partake in the friends and family test net trial. It's uh, basic. It's an over collateralized 
self-repaying non-liquidating loan protocol. Oh, that sounds interesting. So the, what you put down, you get, you know, until they get to a certain liquidity point, you, they're going to, they want to eventually bump it up to, you can borrow 80%, but right now it's going to be 50%, um, uh, for non-stables and 65% for stables. But it, that then can, that is then used to earn yield, uh, versus during using like, uh, Ave yield farming or any other yield, uh, protocol that they have in place so that yield then pays off your loan uh, but you get to get that yield up front basically well, that's it that's a very interesting concept so now you got my now you got my gears turning man that's a uh that's a very a very interesting way to do things you know yeah. i mean i, I I don't know. Like, I don't know about you guys, but like, I, I've seen a big shift, man, this year. Like I, like I said, I was saying earlier, like I've seen so many projects present in these spaces where I was actually impressed and wanted to know more, you know, whereas like, I feel like that was not the case six months ago. Yeah. You no, know, that's, uh, it, it, and it's, and it's, and it's building out too, because like, um, it, you know, we we like I look at people and they talk about the the safety and and stuff like that and what they're building, and you know people are building some amazing shit um, compared to six months ago when they just started to build amazing stuff and people were still getting out of you know using ninety percent of their budget for marketing and ten percent for development and just getting an MVP out, um, you know. And now, you know, people are actually building and, and those are the ones that I got my eye on and I, and I get to find them at like, you know, the, oh yeah, we just came out of stealth after, you know, 12 months of building. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. I want to know what you're doing. <laughs> you know, I don't even care what it is. We take my money. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Yeah, dude, I totally feel you, man. Like, and that's kind of the approach we've taken, right? Like, I mean, like not to like, just like, kind of tell you how I started a project really is like, you know, I was a DJ to the core, right? Like, you know, I'm, I'm doing anything and everything to make money. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm shoot. I mean, dude, I was in everything from, you know, nodes to NFTs to rebasing tokens to like all of it. Right. And some stuff worked out really good and some stuff worked out really bad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was actually a, uh, I was a pretty large holder, um, in a project that rugged on avalanche and, uh, you know, I've been Which in rugs before, right. Uh, Univ. Okay. So I, I was like the third largest holder in that project at one point. And, uh, but I was just an investor, right. And, but I was super active in the discord. Like I made a ton of friends in the community. I was doing, you know, everything I could do to help that project because I, I felt like, you know, I'm, I was smart enough to understand that it's still a Ponzi scheme to some extent, and it's not going to last forever. But I think that they had, they were like first market advantage with the NFTs as nodes and like their UI was incredible. They had decent gamification to begin with. And so, you know, we're all in the community. We're trying to help them. We're like, Hey, like, let's implement this idea. Why don't we implement this? Do it like this. Like there, we had a lot of ideas for how to help that project. And, uh, you know, the founders were completely anonymous, didn't, you know, weren't exactly the, uh, the friendliest of people. And, yeah. uh, you know, needless to say, you know, the project rugged and I've, I've seen many projects rug, right? We know how this goes. They rug, they take all the money, the discord disappears, the Twitter disappears. And then this whole community that's been built just kind of fizzles away and everybody's left to like rot in their corners alone, like pissed off, you know? And, uh, what? and this was no small community. I mean, there was 14,000 something holders at one point, I think. So, well, so one of the cool things that I've started to see, this is where investors have gotten really smart. They're not investing in new projects. What they're finding, what like one, one of the things that I've been tasked with finding from a few few investors is NFT projects that have been rugged because those projects have already done all the legwork on building a community. Yep. That's the hardest thing to do. And so it's funny. We're, do... we're working on something kind of similar. We're working on a, uh, a game plan that we have for, uh, for helping out some of these rug projects. 
Yeah, so, um, I would lo like I li I held a space. Um, I want to say I was in a cabin in the woods in Rhode Island. So three four weeks ago, um, where you know a couple projects that I know of that have been rugged and and now been derugged, you know, had them all in the space at the same time. Um, that was a pretty pretty awesome space. Um, and and then there's there's some really cool people, really good projects that work out, go out of their way to help other projects, uh, you know, unrug themselves. And so, what's really funny is the people that usually get paid the least in a project are the ones that end up saving it sometimes. And so, a huge shout out to community mods. Hundred hundred percent, man. And yeah. and that was kind of our our game plan to begin with, right? So like when when because I was actually watching the Unif chart live when the rug took place. Yeah. And, uh, it, it was funny. So like, I'm sitting here and it's like, so I was always investing, like I've been buying crypto since like 2016, you know, but I was always just buying like ETH and Bitcoin and layer one stuff. Right. I was never really into the DeFi side, like the deeper web three side. Right. And, uh, I actually broke my leg in, uh, the March 1st of last year. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I own a business in real life. So I own a hot rod shop in Texas where I build custom cars and I've been in the automotive industry for, I don't know, 17 years now. And, um, so I've, I've never not worked. Like I've had a job every day since I was 16 years old. And, uh, so when I broke my leg, I was, I couldn't walk for almost six months. I was on crutches, you know, no weight bearing, no walking, no nothing. So I was just stuck at home and it gave me all this time to like really deep dive into web three and start to educate myself like on a deeper level. And, uh, you know, that was really when like things started to click where it's like, okay, now I see what's going on here. You know what I mean? And, uh, so when the project rugged, I'm, I'm sitting there watching the chart and the market cap goes from 9 million to 110 million with no price change. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, the only way that happens is if a shitload of tokens just came into existence out of nowhere. And sure enough, as soon as that happened, within five minutes, they had drained like $4 million in liquidity out of three different pools. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I had actually gotten banned from the Discord a month before for basically calling out the founder on their like master game plan of how they were going to like prevent whales from selling the token down. And I'm like, your plan's not going to work. You know, and I'm, I'm a pretty professional, respectful guy, right? So I'm not like, I'm trying to be as nice as I can about it and not be fuddy and not disrespect anybody. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be cordial about it. And uh, the head, the head, whatever uh, founder of the project just banned me. And I'm like, oh, that's great. So I'm in like back DMs with all the mods. And I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like, are you guys going to unban me? Like, this is crazy. And they're like, we're trying, like, we're, we're like negotiating and begging with like her to unban you right now. And, uh, so needless to say, I'm watching the chart and I, st I see the rug. So I start DMing all the mods. I'm like, yo, they're pulling the rug right now. The rug is literally being pulled as we speak. And, uh, so they go into like full panic mode, you know, the mods do. And, uh, I'm like, just unban me. Like it's the project's dead now. Like you might as well just unban me. So, so they unban me and I'm back in the chat and it's an absolute disaster show. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, as you can imagine. And so yeah. I'm like, well, shit, what can I do here? I'm like, okay. I'm going to set up a discord and I'm just going to tell everybody in the community to come over to the discord. So like, I don't know what we're going to do, but at least we have somewhere to talk and not just be like all this community building and friends and people that I've spent weeks and weeks talking with. We don't just all disappear and, and go our separate ways. And, uh, and that's really like how things got started. We all went into a, you know, a discord, like a new discord. And then I started doing AMAs every Sunday and just chatting with the community of like, Hey, like, what do you guys want to see? Like, I want to build a better DeFi project and I want to bring my real world business experience into web three and build something that's actually sustainable and can work. And we just tossed around ideas until we started to kind of develop something. And then, uh, I actually met my business partner, Zach, who, um, that's a long story on how we met, but like, and we've really just been like cultivating this idea for months and months and months. And we haven't spent any money on marketing. We stealth launched our NFTs and we're really just like focused on community building and trying to do things the right way. And I don't want to go into a whole project shill here, so I'm not going to do that, but it, it's just crazy how we all end up here. And like, you know, I don't know. It's wild, man. You, you let me get off on a tangent taco. 
<laughs> I, I love tangents. So what was <laughs> so you said you said you said your your background is is car making. Yeah, so I'm a I've you know I have a degree in automotive engineering, and then uh, I've worked I've worked my way up through the automotive industry from you know, being a ASC certified master tech. And then I went to work at Ford racing for a while. And, um, then I got into the custom hot rod industry and which is really where the money's at. And, uh, and then eventually just, you know, decided to open my own shop, uh, almost five years ago, I've been doing that. So, you know, it's, nice. uh, I, went, it's really where um, I came from. I went to Denver automotive and diesel college 20, 22 years ago to, for my master tech. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did nice, not. Man. I went. I went for the associate's degree position, um, yeah. and at the same time, I was going for my amino science degree at Metro. Um, and I dropped. So I ended up dropping out of automotive. I was like, "What better way to like be a Chad, but like build cars <laughs> and lift weights?" You know. I'm, and so uh, you know, I uh, you know ended up going the, just the r- route of lifting weights. Um, and thinking I would create the next pre-workout that gets you jacked. So my running joke is I went to college and all I got was my ass, my, <laughs> my, my associate of specialized science. <laughs> That's funny, and, dude. You know, so, um, yeah, but, um, I actually just, I don't know if you know, Matthew Cunningham, um, He's sort of big in the automotive world on like the name sounds concept familiar. Car. I can't put a face with it, but the name sounds familiar. He's he's designed a lot of the prop cars for like King Kong, Godzilla, okay. Jurassic Park, uh, Fast and the Furious, like yep. that over the top concept yep. cars. Yep. Um, and he and I post I just posted his his NFT project uh, Y Zero up in the and I would love to connect the two of you guys. Um, like you know directly so you guys could meet and see what the yeah if where they're because what they're doing is they're using his years and years of, of knowledge uh in the industry and his connections to make um one um uh, they they want to be the uh, the auto shop of the metaverse two okay. they want to build they want to use the funding that they make from their nft projects to make uh concept cars that show renewable technologies can be how they can be used to like sort of revolutionize the auto industry as a whole, everything from um, refurbished plastics and, and even um, mycelium fungus, uh, mushroom uh, leather uh, in, in in stuff like that and foams and stuff like that. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sitting in mycelium. I hope it's not. That's, that's, those are all, you know, developments that are needed, man. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm a, I'm a gas and oil guy to the core, right? I mean, I, uh, yep. I grew up drag racing and yeah, you know, now I'm not a carburetor guy. I think carburetors are trash, What? But, you know, I'm oh a fuel my God, injection I don't guy like to the you Well, uh, I'm a fuel injection guy to the core, man. You know, why do I, why do I want to use a mechanical controlled leak when I can have computer controlled precise injection, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess... carburetors have their place, right? I mean, they're they're cool. I, you know, I've I've built dozens and dozens and dozens of cars with carburetors, right? But yeah. you know, I'm 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 somebody like my shop. We specialize in modernization. So yeah. you know, really, what everybody wants is they want a '69 Camaro, but they want it to drive like a new car. And like, what people forget is how spoiled we are with new cars. You know, you can go take a '69 Z28 Camaro with restored to concourse grade perfection and the cheapest new Hyundai will run circles around it in every single category. Yeah. Everything from noise, vibration, harshness, comfortability, handling, braking, air conditioning, performance, zero to 60 fuel economy. It will beat it in everything. And so really that's what people want. And so that's what I specialize in is bring me the body I don't need the chassis. I don't need the frame. I don't need the drivetrain. I don't need the interior. Just bring the shell and we'll give you back the car you want. So, you know, I, I do pretty much take my old car and pack all the brand new shit, latest, greatest stuff in it and make sure it drives like my brand new Corvette does. And so can, that's kind can of the we, special. Can we, make it a, can we make it a Barracuda? Sure. I actually have a, I mean, I don't do a lot of, uh, 
you know, I don't do a lot of Mopars, but uh, I have, I'm actually doing a 69 Coronet for a guy right now. Ooh, okay. So what color? You know, uh, it's uh, it's like a light blue. Okay. I guess so, that's not uh, bad. I, no, I feel, no, I feel it, if it's, it's a Barracuda, decent. it has to be that, that it has to be the horrible green. It kind of does. I mean, that's a good color. You know, you know, I do a lot yeah. of GM cars. Um, and, and what I was getting at though, with the renewable thing is like, I actually have a, a client whose cars in my shop right now. And it's a, I don't, I don't know how familiar you are with factory five, but factory five builds like all of the Shelby 427 Cobra replicas. The, uh, uh you know, no, the I, I, I remember, yeah, they, they you know, do the, they do the crate version too, that you can buy and assemble yourself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so that company makes another car called a GTM which is a tube chassis, fiberglass body, kind of looks like a Ford GT. It's a mid-engine, like, supercar-type vehicle. Yeah. Um, normally, it would have a Corvette motor with, like, a Porsche gearbox in the back. And uh, so one of my customers actually had one that he had started building, and it was probably, like, 70% of the way done. And uh, him and I were drinking beers one night, and I'm a, I'm a big Tesla investor. I've, I've been buying Tesla stock since late 2015. And so okay. I'm really fascinated with, with what Tesla's doing. I think that I had a come to Jesus moment the first time I rode in my buddy's uh, P 100 D. I mean, I, I thought I was going to die. And yeah. uh, so we're actually doing a full Tesla conversion on that GTM. So we ripped all the LS stuff Ooh. out. All the, all the gas engine stuff is out of the car. And we've put a, a P 100 D large rear drive unit and a hundred kilowatt battery pack. And uh, I actually just sent the frame to powder coat on Monday um, we just finished like all the fabrication cause I had to cut the whole back of the frame off and like restructure everything to fit the drive unit and fit all the batteries in, you know, it's like trying to s- squeeze a size eight ass and a two pair of pants, you know? Nice. So, but like, I think that's the future. You know, I think we're going to start to see a lot more, you know, electric conversions and performance applications um, because it makes sense. Right. I mean, it's uh, and it's not, when you look at doing a full top of the line gas powered build, it's really not that much more expensive, and yet you get insane power. I mean, this thing's half the weight of a Model S, and it makes you know 900 horsepower and a thousand foot-pounds of torque at zero yeah. RPM. I mean, it's insanity. You know, it's going to be terrifying. But uh, it's I, you've seen you've seen you've seen the the video of the guy that that got the salvage Tesla and like rebuilt it from scratch, right? Or like, yeah, uh, yeah. Rick re, uh, Rich rebuilds. Yeah. That was amazing, but um, um, I've only ridden in a Tesla twice or three times, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the really things that I didn't actually know was how safe they were until I heard that story about what two weeks ago. Oh, about that Devil Cliff story. Yeah, you know, that dad drove you know the car and the family over. Yep, and even the babe, none of even the baby was 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 good. Mm Hmm. You know. So I yeah, got, I got to get but, hands down the safest cars in the world by a lot. One of the coolest things I think that Tesla's built that no one really ever talks about are bricks. You said brakes, bricks. Oh, bricks. Yeah. So with his, his tunnel project, they, they mm-hmm. didn't know what to do with their, the, all their dirt and sand afterwards. So Elon oh, figured out how to that. make like a, how, how to make a different freaking type of brick that was yep. stronger and cheaper. <laughs> I got to give them props. <laughs> I mean, what yeah. the, the thing I, the, 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 the logical approach that I took with Elon Musk as an investor was how many times does a guy have to do impossible shit before you stop betting against him? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm going to build a rocket company. Yeah, sure. You are went and built a rocket company. I'm going to make reusable rockets. No, you're not. Did it. I'm going to make electric cars that people want to buy. No, you're not. Did it. Oh, no. No, like, I'm going to make rockets that land themselves. That's what I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, autonomously. So it's like, so it's like how, and then they're how like, many okay. times can this guy pull off the impossible before you say, you know what, I'm just going to bet that he's probably going to do it most of the time and see yeah. what happens. <laughs> or or, or he's going to do it and, and it will just be awesome to watch it explode or something. Like yeah, exactly, you know, like because then he takes it. Yeah, we're gonna make rockets that land themselves. Oh, we're gonna make rockets that land themselves on a robot-controlled barge on the in the yep. sea. <laughs> like, like it's, how much? It's pretty insane. Yeah, I, I you know the the craziest thing he's done that is 
I don't even know how to say his son's name. Uh, I think it's pronounced Kyle, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah I, you know, he named it after a fucking airplane. He named him yeah. after an airplane. So. <laughs> but, um, but it's crazy. I mean, dude, the, the, uh, the FSD is what really gets me, man. And like, so my, a good friend of mine who, uh, so my shop's at an airport, I have an airplane hangar and that's like where my shop is at. And so I'm around nice. a bunch of airplane guys all day, you know? And, uh, one of my buddies, he bought like the 15th model S that was ever produced. So like he was on their pre-order list, like the day that he announced the car. And, uh, so he's on their FSD beta. Uh, he's one of the 10,000 people who gets the FSD updates before everybody else does for testing. And so he has, he, he still has his original model S, but he also has a, like a 2021 P 100 D, which is like their top, you know, top trim line car. And, uh, we were going to a Cowboys game cause I live in Texas. I'm in, I'm just North of Dallas and, okay. uh, my shop's probably 40 minutes from AT&T stadium where the Cowboys play. So and, you're uh, in Frisco. I am in McKinney. I could throw oh. a rock and hit Frisco. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, the colony. <laughs> oh, sh- dude. I lived in little Elm for a while and yeah, I'm, I'm right here and right here just North of McKinney or just North okay. of Frisco. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, you know, right where I'm at. <laughs> yep. Um, so he calls me, he's like, Hey, I'm gonna come pick you up. And I was like, all right. So he picks me up and he goes, I just got the FSD beta update. And this is like maybe a, two months ago, somewhere around there. And, yeah. uh, he goes, he goes, watch this. We're sitting out front of my shop in the airport. He double taps the stock and puts it in full self-driving with AT&T stadium programmed in this car drove us from my shop to AT&T stadium and put us in a parking spot with no interventions at all from him the entire way. Nice. So stop signs, stop lights, merging onto the highway, changing lanes, navigating traffic, multiple different interchanges off the highway into the parking lot and found a parking spot and put us in it. And dude, I was, my mind was completely like destroyed. I'm (laughs) like, this is so much further along because I had been in his FSD early, like a, like a year and a half before that. <clears throat> and it was good, but like, it felt robotic. If that makes yeah. sense. Like this felt like a human. It was so smooth. And so like, it was creepy almost. It felt like a person driving the car. And I'm like, what? dude, in a year from now or two years from now, this shit is going to be insane. Well, just wait until cars are talking to each other. Yep. You and know, like, and, and like, like, so like one of, like one of the things where I, you know, the, like the decentralization of data and the ownership of data, one of the things that I've done with like my car is I drive to earn. Um, okay. So I have my car. Uh, I use, uh, I use, uh, what is it played to bridge my, my, my uh, smart, the smart part of my, my Equinox, uh, so bypass OnStar, and it goes through Dimeo. So Dimeo gets all of my car stuff before it goes to GM, and I'm able to monetize my data. Wait, are you talking um, about Demo? I yes, I am. Dude, dude we uh, we just had Demo. We just had the guys from Demo on an AMA not too long ago. I, those guys are awesome, man. Awesome. I need. Yeah. Uh, I was. I'm. I'm locked. I'm. I'm still earning. But I'm locked out of my account and I can't get in it. <laughs> oh, dude, I can get you in contact with those guys. I mean, Rob Solomon, he's a he's a good friend of ours, man. Uh, yeah, I was one of the original beta testers of it, and yeah, so like, demo's great. I can't I can't get into the new account. Like, I had it when it was a web app, and and they like or it was just like a little like enter into like blank form car data. <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, but that's awesome. Yeah, but no, like I. That's the shit I love in the decentralization part of data yep. piece that I love. Yeah, it's um, it's incredible, man. Like there's so many cool things being built right now that like people have never even heard of, right? Because like you know, to new people coming into web3, it's like the focus is always on meme coins and NFTs and let's hit 100x and like but people don't even so many a, a large swath of people just don't even see all the unbelievably incredible things that are being built that have real tangible applications. Yep. I'm, um, I'm, I'm stoked for it, man. Like I, this is the most exciting space to be building in bar none. No, it, it totally is. Um, 
you know, um, one of the, you know, one of the people that was up here earlier, Jetman, you know, um, he, he's, he's doing some stuff. He's like 24 in Nigeria, 26. And he made a lot of money during, you know, trading and teaching himself how to trade and stuff. And then now he's going back and he's trying, he's trying to do like this NFT blockchain, um, audible thing for, uh, books. And so that books can be decentralized so that people can learn English or learn, uh, you know, he's, yeah. Like these things are just being amazing of what people are building to support their communities, not even looking at it at a global scale. That's how you affect global. You, you affect locally. A hundred percent, man. You start, if you can affect change in one place, you can affect change everywhere, but it has to start somewhere, you know, you got to start somewhere. And, uh, Yeah, dude, I totally agree with you, man. Well, I know yeah. I know the space has been kind of small, but um, I'm glad I popped in here, man. It was uh, it was definitely nice to uh, have a little conversation that wasn't, you know, we do so many like, you know, standard come on, tell about your project. Like we do so many of those types of spaces that it's like I always like to be able to hop into these later night spaces and just have conversations with people. Oh yeah, man. Um, this is the so Taco Bites has gone on for. Oh man, 155 days now. You you do a space every day? Yep. Nice man. Well, um, I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely have to pop back in for one for sure. Yeah, I I have tried this last these last two weeks to move them back into like morning time, early afternoon, so that like I can go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> right that's what i was that's what i was just getting ready to say i'm like it's getting awful late and i gotta take my ass to sleep because i got stuff to build tomorrow man <laughs> yeah definitely um for those that are listening um i don't know if it works but the first thing that was put up on the jumbotron is a qr code for a po app you get a po app of me we'll see if it works if not i'm gonna take it down at the end of the space um Altitude, is there anything else that you want to tell about? Like, I would love to go through a full teardown of what you're build of what you're building. You know, one of these days. Um, I yeah, for sure, man. I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm always happy to come on and talk about it. What's the but what's the thirty second? And I, I'll be honest, I like to talk about the nuts and bolts of things of why yep. you're building, not yep. necessarily what you're building, because that's more interesting than what you're building. Because pretty much everything in Web three right now is awesome. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, you know, uh, since you were the only speaker up here tonight, um, <laughs> right now, what, it, what, give me closing words, 10 seconds. Yeah I, mean, I, yeah. I mean, I can give you the, uh, like the, the kind of quick and dirty, um, oh, okay, yeah. Give me the quick and dirty of, 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 of what you do and then we'll really, go and then really we'll go to what, closing statements. So, so really what we believe in is we believe that the next logical step for Web3 adoption and, and DeFi adoption and crypto adoption is taking existing business models and improving upon them with the integration of Web3 or blockchain in some aspect or another. You know, I'm not a big believer that the wheel needs to be in re- reinvented when the wheel works just fine. And I think we have to start applying blockchain in ways that regular retail investors can understand. Um, and so that's really what we're doing. We're building real world businesses and we're utilizing blockchain to make those businesses more efficient. So that's nice. kind of the, the quick and the 30 yeah. second speed pitch of what, what we do. Um, the other aspect of, of the altitude club itself <clears throat> is essentially what we're building is a networking group. So we're, we're bringing in some of the best developers, the best project founders, artists across web three, we're bringing them into a singular community so that if you're an entrepreneur, you're somebody who wants to build in web three, you can come into the altitude club and have access to so many resources that would take you an enormous amount of time to acquire on your own. And we, can kind of help jumpstart you in the right direction, especially if you're somebody whose integrity and business principles align with ours. Nice. All right. I think then maybe that might warrant further conversations. Um, but yeah, no, that's, a, that's amazing. I do the, I do the same thing as a, as a member of uh, continuum 3000. So yeah. Um, that's cool. I like it. Um, that's like a, that's a, what would I call that? A bass, a web bass, web three bass, web three business as a service. In a sense. Um, yeah. To, yeah. To a degree for sure. Yeah. So, well, so like, you know, an avalanche, like 
especially the AVAX NFT space, there's like a big desire from the community for passive income. It's really one of the things that, you know, with success of all these like, you know, chicken game and some of the play to earn models, like AVAX kind of pigeonholed itself into this like passive income NFT utility kind of corner. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, really where we approached it was like, okay, these Ponzanomics schemes, they don't work, right? Play to earn is the same thing as a, as a node. It's just with creative burn mechanics and JPEGs attached, but it's literally the same thing. It's an infinitely inflating token that will go to zero and some people make money, but most people get wrecked. And so we were looking at like, okay, if you want to generate yield for people, the yield's got to come from somewhere. It has to come from a business or revenue model that actually makes money. It's the only way that it works. And so, you know, that's kind of the basis for being in the altitude club and holding one of our, our membership club royalty cards is that you're entitled to 10% of any profit that we make from any business that we incubate as the altitude club. So you have to think of us more like a holding company that is building other companies underneath of us. Yeah. Um, what is it? Um, uh, VC 360, I think sort of does something like that as well, yep. which is really cool. Um, there's a couple of groups like that too, where they, you know, almost like think tank slash strategic advisor boards, you know, that, you know, that they, they're able to incubate and support and, um, um, what's the word I'm thinking of here, subsidize services. And they already have a list of service providers for like what you might need A to Z and, uh, you know, are able to, you know, connect those services. And that's uh, hell. That's what I do directly as a person uh, and my role and, you know, for my company. Um, so yeah. Um, but that's, that's amazing that you turn it into, that you've turned it into a full service like that piece. So, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it, it's not only web three businesses, it's web, it's, it's real world businesses as well. Like, so like we just launched our first business um, about a month and a half ago. Um, and we we're a registered LLC in the state of Florida. That's where my co-founder Zach is based out of. Um, and then we launched our, our first real world business because Zach's background is uh, he ran a financial advising firm for about seven years and then he sold his book of business. So he's been in the financial services industry for you know a decade now, a little over. And um, so we launched a, a company called Prolodex. And what like if you're a financial advisor and you don't work for a large firm, the hardest thing to do is find clients. That is by far the hardest thing for a, a financial advisor to do, especially if you're a solo you know entrepreneur yeah. and operator. You're just cold. You're just cold calling. Yeah. So what we do is we have a service where clients who are interested in finding financial advisors, whether that's to manage a retirement account or manage you know, a 401k or, or whatever it is. Um, and then we pre-vet those clients, find out, you know, what's their account size and, you know, what is their strategy? What's their risk tolerance? Then we pair those people with advisors that suit their criteria. And then we set the appointment date and time for the advisor. So the advisor buys a list of clients with preset dates and times on pre-vetted clients that meet their criteria. Then all they have to do is show up and make the sale. Yeah. So, um, but that's, that's our first, you know, IRL business under the altitude club. And then we've got some NFT projects coming up. We've got, uh, some partnerships with some metaverse, uh, builders. Um, you know, we're, we're, pretty close with uh if you're familiar with darcy donovan and what she's doing with star dogs yeah, star dogs yeah, yeah. so we're, i know, we're I know darcy with, yeah she's, we're pretty close yeah. with them um and have been working with a lot of their team members as well as like crypto magazine um so we, know, we've got yeah. a lot of irons in the fire right now um but we're in our growth yeah, phase, crypto you know? magazine you know um yeah uh you know loudmouth's a friend you know he's I, a just had a, I just had a call with loudmouth um Two days ago. He's, he's fucking amazing. I love him. He, he's an awesome dude, man. And uh, he actually lives here in Dallas. So him and I are going to meet yeah. up sometime soon and uh, go have a, go have a beer or some coffee or something. All right. Yeah. Tell him, you know, tell he, so yeah. Tell him, tell him you talked with taco. Um, he's a great he's, dude, man. He, he's good peeps. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm going to be in Miami next week uh, from uh, Tuesday night to Saturday morning. Um, but yeah, I normally drive across the country last year. I put, um, 50, no, 60,000 miles on my car. And my car spent four months in, uh, in, a three months in a parking garage at an, at an international airport while I was traveling Europe. So dude, I couldn't be more opposite than you. I live five minutes away from my shop. 
And I yeah. literally drive to my shop. I work at my shop. I drive home. I do Web three stuff, and then I repeat it tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, I put like I put like twenty five hundred miles a year on my car tops. <laughs> oh yeah, well yeah, I was driving to every single conference last year. That's crazy, man. I love road trips though. So like you yeah. know, it's something about being on the open road that is just like mentally cleansing. Yeah, one of uh, one of my NFT projects I work with, uh, their 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 bio of me is Taco can usually be found driving cross country minting NFTs, and I'm like, I don't do them at the same time most of the time. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Yeah, but, I, I would drive a lot more, but like I'm very fortunate. My uh, yeah. my mom works for Southwest Airlines, and she's been there for 40 years. And oh, so- your legacy. Yeah. So I, you know, I pretty much fly for free, you know, kind of whatever I want. And then on top of that, all my neighbors own airplanes. So it's like, nice. so, you know, I I, I I know exactly exactly where you're at. So yeah, no, um, I, yeah. So, uh, NFTs, they're on AVAX. So, um, so our club membership cards, uh, we were originally going to do a 10,000 collection because, you know, we don't want to, you want to have a cap on royalties. You don't want to just endlessly dilute people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we were originally going to do all 10,000 on AVAX, but like in the, in the spirit of community building and like wanting to, cause we're really a, a service that can fit any chain, right? Like we're not really specific yeah. to one chain. And, uh, and I think that a lot of blockchains have a lot of value and a lot to offer, right? Like I'm super bullish on ETH on Polygon. Um, you know, and so we've actually decided I'll turn you to, on to split polka the dot. collection. I'll turn yeah, you on to polka dot. I would love to learn more about dot. I'll turn you, I'll turn you on to Solana and polka dot. Yeah, and so like we decided to split the collection across three chains, um, but right now we're only on two. So right now you can buy on AVAX or on ETH. Um, they're roughly the same price. I mean, obviously, like within a couple bucks of each other, depending on you know prices of the day. But um, yeah. but they're both on OpenSea. If you search the Altitude Club, you can find both collections there. Um, right. You know, right now they're I think with the price of AVAX, they're like about thirty five bucks or so. Okay. Um, and then that gets you, you know, lifetime access to uh, all the club member channels within the Discord. Um, we've actually got our VIP memberships coming out soon where you're going to be able to, because uh, right now VIPs are people who own five or more because the royalties are distributed on one-to-one basis. So if you own five, you get five times as much as someone who owns one. Um, yeah. We actually just did our first distribution on New Year's Day. We've got another one coming up on the first. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's like you can you can buy on either chain, whatever chain, you know, suits you. And, uh, and if, if you want to go cross chain, we have, uh, we have a partnership with smart finance. So we have their Omni decks actually built into our website. So if you go to the altitude club.com, um, and go to the, the catalog, you can, you can bridge swap right there within the, within the site. And, um, they have one of the fastest bridges that I've seen. They're like, I think they have eight chains that they support and they're bridging cross chain in like less than 60 seconds. So right. it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I, we, we wanted to make sure that it was as easy as people as we can make it for people you know nice yeah no so i um at the at the start of the day and end of the day i work uh for my company that i created zero x dgens um you know basically what you do you know uh consulting strategic advisor um you know connect with all of the right good players in the in the you know what chain to build on and connect with what layer one or layer two or if you even need to work on a layer, you know, tokenomics, white papers and pitch decks, introductions yep. to VCs and VC DAOs, DAO formation and, 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 and tooling and ruling and uh, legal structure set up outside of the United States in either the Marshall Islands through my DAO or uh, through uh, Cayman Islands with a BVI offshoot or even uh, uh, Greece um, or the UAE. Um, and then at the same and then working on a, a, a service right now for basically a TLDR. So like if you're needing a full report of like all the news around a certain topic each week or, you know, however many times a week you get either a certain amount of reports per month or you get, you know, pay by report type of thing. Um, that type of service. Cause I have access to some really good fire hydrants to get all of that, get all of that information. And I'm good at aggregating data and, and getting that data aggregated. Um, and uh yeah no but uh or you know marketing plans heck you know billboard in vegas what more can you you know uh yeah. but then uh gorilla marketing as well you know so 
yeah, it's uh, this is a this is an exciting time. Um, on the uh, professional, more professional side, I guess you could say, um, work for Stella Swap, the largest decks on Moonbeam, and okay. then uh, work for Banksa and and uh, Simplex for Fiat to Crypto on ramping, um, or credit card for NFT Mint, um, and then at the then off and on with Koi Network as well for network support, you know, basically uh, rewarding you for your attention. Interesting, man. I, I love it, man. Like networking is one of my favorite things to do. Um, yeah. And so it's like, I, I love people, man. I like getting to know people. I like hearing people's stories. And so I always love to meet other people that are into networking, man. It's uh, cause it, it I, I just enjoy it. I, I like the variety and, I feel like I constantly am learning things from new people. So it's, I, I'm a, I'm a knowledge whore, you know, right. I, you can't have enough. Uh, yeah. I like to get the bukkake of information. Uh, facts, dude. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm with it. I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I just love research, man. I, and like, there's just so, so many people have so much to offer and everybody has something to offer, you know? And yeah. you like, I see so many people that kind of close their minds to, especially once you feel like you, know a lot about a certain topic you stop listening to people and you start just trying to like people go through this phase where they try to prove their knowledge i think that DeFi guy was kind of in that stage like yeah where he feels like he knows enough like where he knows more than most people but he's like trying to prove how much he knows but in the process he's exposing how much he still needs to learn yeah and he, you know. he's on the right path. He's talking the right stuff, but then he uses, you know, like we were talking chat GPT and then all of a sudden, and then he's like people killing people. And I'm like, yeah, now I'm you're like, just wait a minute. making how does this, sound bites. Yeah. And how does this connect? Speaking like, of Koi Network, is, is that really Koi Network that we have joining us? It is. I literally just mentioned you and how awesome you, you are. They heard you talking. Their ears... Uh, here, hold on one second, because altitude. This is uh, Coin Network is like we were talking about earlier. Attention, um, and rewarding you for your attention. Who's uh manning the mic tonight over at Coy? Come on up, if you can. Let's come, come. I say. I just gave him a follow. I'm going to definitely look into, uh, into what they're doing. You know, it's hard, yeah. man. Like it's funny how, when you start a project, you have so much less time for research. Oh, like, yeah. Cause I got, I got, like I said, I spent six months stuck at home for the first time in my life ever. Like I've never been stuck at home with where like, it's not that I didn't have anything to do. I literally couldn't do anything like, yeah. like my car is a manual transmission. So it's like, I couldn't even drive my car. Like <laughs> I, I, I'm literally the, like the stuck at the house. Of- the days of what was it? Three to four days per gallon. Yeah, I mean, for re- I mean, I have like I have my little beater car, so like I've got a couple hot rods that are at my shop, but like my little back and forth beater mobile is. Uh, I actually bought it from my neighbor. He uh, he works for American Airlines as a captain, and then he retired. Um, I want to say like December, a little over a year ago. So December of twenty twenty one, and. Uh, he had this little Ford Focus that he's owned since it was brand new. It's got like 200,000 miles on it, but he's an aircraft guy. So this car has been like meticulously maintained from the day it was like born. And, yeah. uh, and I had a big F-150 at the time that like, it was nice. It was cool. I liked the truck. It was a great truck, but like I used to live further away from my shop. And now that I've moved like really close, I'm like, why am I driving this truck back and forth to work every day? I'm like, I'm paying $300 a month for insurance. And like, this is ridiculous. And, uh, so he was like, man, he's like, I'm getting ready to sell this little focus. I was like, what do you want for it, man? He's like, I don't know. You give me like 1500 bucks for it. I'm like, done. I'm go, I'll go get you cash right now. And, uh, so I've just been whipping this. Dude, I get like 40 miles a gallon in this little car. I love it. It's outstanding. And then I've got, I've got a 35 Ford hot rod truck and a couple Nissan 300 ZXs that are like my babies, but, uh, oh, fun, fun. But yeah, um, I just, whip, what's, I just the, what's, the, what's, the little, what's the, what's the strip track that's over there? Which, uh, th- like the drag strip? Yeah. The closest one to me is probably Yellow Belly, which is over off of uh, Loop 12, like kind of down near, like downtown Dallas. And then you've got okay. Ennis. Ennis yep. is like the big NHRA track where they have like yep. the world championships and stuff. 
Yeah. And then Kennedale closed down, which is the one out in Fort Worth. They that that track closed down. That was the, wasn't that one sponsored by like John Force? No, that's that's Ennis. That's Ennis. Oh, okay. Yeah, All Ennis right. is like huge. I mean, they they they're, they're yeah. not going anywhere. But, yeah. uh, cause they have the NHRA top fuel nationals there and all the funny car nationals are there. So, I mean, Ennis isn't going, and that's a big facility. I mean, I think they can seat like 10 or 12,000 people. I mean, that's a big, yeah, that's a big, and that's they a do, big track. They do, they do great race weeks. Um, oh God, yeah. And then yellow belly is like the underworld of drag racing where you can like take shots, drink beer and bet on drag cars that are going down. What is borderline a decrepit parking lot? <laughs> well, that that's that's where you can also go and drag strip minivans. Not saying I've done that. Per, I'm gonna just gonna cut it off at that. But yeah, Yellow Belly, they're they're not exactly OSHA approved. If you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> they don't uh, they don't really give a shit. As long as you're not blowing oil all over the track, go ahead and get out there and run it, buddy. Oh, uh, roll cage, yeah. you don't need one of those. A helmet, <laughs> forget it. The, they know. block your field of vision. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, it's seatbelts optional. Yeah. You know, it's that kind of place. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember seatbelts in Mad Max. Yeah, you know, you'll be fine. You're going so fast. If you hit something, you're not even going to know what happened. All right. So, <laughs> big question then for 2022. What was the worst NFT you minted? Ooh. Worst NFT I minted. That that's a tough question because it depends on what you're measuring it by. Um, you I set that say, standard all across. The, it's an open question. Hmm. Worst NFT I minted. I would probably say either Illuminati Owls or Avax Lions. Okay. I, I would say those are probably the Avax Lions because their artwork was awesome. They had backing from like a big other project and they literally minted all these nfts and then just didn't do anything like they just completely ignored their entire roadmap and just didn't do anything nothing like no communication no forward plans it just died all right and i'm like what and then illuminati owls was like they had a lot of potential i think that they were just extremely mismanaged by their by the team who started it. All right. But you know what? I, I can't say Illuminati Owls because I made a lot of friends from that community, people I still talk to today. So, you know, although I had a lot of NFTs that were essentially ended up being worth jack shit, um, I did, there was a positive side to that. Whereas AVAX Lions, I didn't get anything out of. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just flat dead. I, uh, what, okay. So that's the worst NFT you minted. What's the worst NFT that you bought either off floor or en- that you just bought off of open market? Um, that's a good question, dude. I'm probably going to have to go on. I'm going to have to go look because okay. to be honest with you, I don't know. I have so many freaking NFTs. It's kind of retarded. I, um, Ooh, Ooh, wait, can I, can I, can I, I'm going to plug in asset dash right now. The one-stop shop for managing all of your NFTs in one little app and you don't even have to connect your wallet. It just views it. Ooh, that's interesting. Here, I will post my invite code. Yeah, post because, it. Um, if you go to their website and connect, do a one-time connect with your uh, um, uh, wallet, you get um, what's the word I'm thinking of? You get uh, deals, dash deals. So like you like they'll do like uh, ledgers fifty percent off. They did a seventy five percent off Xboxes for a second. Oh, okay. It was nice. it was pretty cool. Um, but then they have like constant stuff going on. But uh, I like it just because I can throw as many wallets up in there that I want, and uh, it it manages. I can connect one. And get the benefits of that one, and because I, I and I then I don't have to connect my other ones that you know have other stuff in them, but it man it, it watches them all for me. Well, that's pretty badass. Yeah, and if you get thirty percent of your community to sign up, so let's say you have ten thousand NFTs and you get thirty percent of your holders, 
uh, to sign up, your NFT project can become one of the Dash Deal um, NFTs that allow people to get into get the Dash Pass. Oh, dude, that's super interesting. So, I'm going to bookmark yeah. this right now so I don't forget about it. I would say the worst NFT I bought off the floor is Time Frogs. Ooh, okay. So if you remember, like, w- when Wonderland was around, which I think every yep. motherfucker in DeFi was in, like, um, these guys launched, uh, a, you know, an NFT project called Time Frogs, and, the, you know, the plan was pretty simple, right? You hold a Time Frog, we take all the money, we're going to put it in Time Wonderland, and then we're going to redistribute all the rebases, right? That was the game plan. And this is back when AVAX was, you know, a hundred and whatever dollars. And, Mm -hmm. uh, I watched them on floor and they were like, you know, two AVAX then five AVAX then seven AVAX. And I'm like, shit. I was like, I'm going to buy one. So I bought a rare one for like nine AVAX or something. I think it cost me like almost 900 bucks. It was like 800 something dollars. And now it's just like completely worthless. you know. (laughs) And I'm like, Oh, that's great. I'll just keep it there as a memory, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And maybe um, one day it'll be a collectible of like remembering the nostalgic time when we all got dicked on Time Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny what? though is like I actually did pretty good on the whole like rebasing DAO phenomena. Yeah. I because right. like the strategy I had was I was taking because it was on all the ones I were in were built on AVAX. So the gas fees are basically zero. Right. Yeah. So what I was doing is I put a lump sum into one, I'd get the rebase. And I, I had like nine of them going at one point that all rebased at different times. And so like, I would just hop in, get the rebase, pull it all right back out, then jump to another one that was about to get rebased, rebase on that one, pull it all back out. So I had limited exposure to the token and I was just jumping DAOs, getting rebases all day long. Nice. And it worked out pretty good. I mean, I ended up like, I think I made like at one point, I think I was up like almost 30 grand. And then I put like, 15 back into time wonderland before it rugged. So I lost a big fucking chunk of it, you Oof. know, but it, you know, it, it the D gen got the better of me, man. I, 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 I FOMO the got, me, went. you know, FOMO got me, man. Like it gets everybody, but it's, you know, you got to learn those lessons the hard way sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you might. So one, if you get back into Zen, go check out uh coin tool. Um, not coin tools, but coin tool, they do batch minters. So instead of you having to have like a hundred wallets, you okay. can have one wallet that creates a hundred other wallets that goes in and starts batch minting Zen. And you can do oh, it on every, all of the, all, all 10 chains that they do it on, except oh, for that's, Doge chain. That's convenient. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, Zen is now trading on like MEXC and a few other, uh, exchanges as well. In your opinion, what is the optimal length of time to mint for with Zen? Uh, depends on what chain. Let's just say ETH for, for conversation. ETH, sake. ETH uh, I think if I remember right, the time frame for profit at today's prices is 93 days. Okay. Um, but uh, I, I'm batch minting you know, a thousand wallets on every other chain other than ETH. Holy um, my, uh, my, my business partner is batch minting 12,000 wallets on one chain or no, sorry, 13,000 wallets on one chain because of what we were seeing with Polygon being done in the background. We sort of think that Polygon Polygon is going to be the next move. Um, because there's a whole new thing with the, with the Zen NFTs, which are doing VMUs. Um, and now there's, there's Phoenix protocol. So basically there's, there's some, there's some back work going on with Jack that like now they're talking a new layer one chain. And it's one of those things where like usually within two weeks of him starting to talk about something, it's done. That's like, so there, I, there's a, there's, there's a bigger, there's a bigger play at play here. I think somewhere, you know, Jack was a, Jack was an original Google employee and he says he has a huge known team behind him. Like, uh, I don't know. Like I have, like, I don't know if this, I don't, I definitely don't feel like there's a rug coming. 
in any way because literally the tokens that are out are being created by me, you, you know, every the I've looked at yeah. the contract uh, um, and I, I've looked at every single chain's contract. Uh, except for Doge Chain, just because I don't want to do anything on Doge Chain except for stupid NFT things. Um, but uh, yeah, um, Polygon and Moonbeam. I'm doing a shit ton on Moonbeam because one of the things that I'm going to be doing on Moonbeam, I'm going to be minting a shit. Uh, well, I'm 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 harvesting a shit ton of Zen on Moonbeam um, because I'm going to actually just start giving that one away. Nice. Because I love Moonbeam, uh, I love Polkadot, but no one really is doing stuff on it. And one of the ideas behind, you know, Jack creating Zen was, you know, the 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 first principles of of Bitcoin for it to be given, handed away, given away. I used to get Bitcoin for free. I'd, I'd watch it, you know. I used to watch a thirty second ad and get five Bitcoin. You yeah. know, I, you know, we give Bitcoin away. Uh, it, you know, even once it became a little bit of had a value to it, you know, just like Zcash used to be done with, you know, and then Zcash jumped up to 80 bucks, you know, yeah. I think it went even higher than that. But like, um, it, there's a lot there. Um, and then there's this new thing coming up with where if any of the NFTs you minted um, between the batch NFT number and the block, there's a formula that if it becomes a if it's a prime number, there's some sort of bonus for some new token that's coming out that's going to be like half the liquidity size or half the half the size. It, there's some weird math shit coming out that they're like, yeah, f- basically for those that participated, we'll be getting rewards, not those that just showed up once and like went away, but those that like keep kept showing up, keep showing up, or those that like came in early and ha- and like bashment out out 400 plus days you know or 365 now 440 days um there's a big play there i think coming up i don't know what it is because the liquidity pools have all been made by people um right. polygon <laughs> there's a huge i think there is a next big piece on it though it's definitely interesting man i i need to uh i need to spend some more time like getting staying up to date with zen you know what i mean i just yeah. uh I, I did it on like day one you know because i heard about it unfortunately i heard about it early so yeah. you know i did it on day one i set up like i don't know not that many i think like 10 wallets and yeah. uh and i've just been holding it you know i transferred it all to one wallet and now i'm just kind of sitting on it i think i did like 45 days or 50 days or something like that nothing yeah. crazy and uh and I'm like, whatever, I'll just hold it and see what happens. You know, what's the worst that happens? I wasted some gas money. Oh, well, you know. Yeah, I've, I've, exactly. I've wasted money on stupider stuff. <laughs> uh, dude, I so the, the dumbest thing I think I minted in 2022 is pixelated sperm. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but just by the name, it sounds terrible. Uh, I, I don't even think there was any utility. I don't, or I didn't even pay attention if there was. I just, I found a mint and I went and minted while I was like half awake, half asleep, I think. Um, it, it happens, dude. Yeah. And the, I think the worst NFT that I bought in 2022, I'm, I really, I think I bought it. I don't think I minted it. Was uh, this, this owner listens to, uh, the owner of this NFT listens to Taylor Swift. Wow. Well, I don't feel yeah. so bad then about some of my stuff. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh man, that's hilarious. Well, shit, man. Well, dude, I've I've really enjoyed this conversation. It was uh, it was good to actually get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, man. Um, but uh, I gotta take ass to bed. All right. So then we will. This is this is what I I, I end I end every show this way. So, um, I don't care what they are. What are the close cl- closing words? 10 seconds. Oh, you went with the silent route for 10 seconds? All right. I man, I I'm really happy that you joined us tonight. 
Um, for those that are just coming, please um, give Abraham a follow. Please follow everyone in the room. Give Koi Network a follow. Um, uh, you know, uh, give the Altitude Club a follow um, and, and see what they're about. See what Koi's about. If, if you want a direct connection with Koi, please feel free to reach out to me um, or reach out to Koi directly. Um, they're doing amazing things um, and, and really working towards um, a better tomorrow. Uh, one of the founders, uh, you know, Jacob and Al, Al is, Al's a special kind of somebody. So, yeah. Um, but so closing words for me, I use the same closing words every night because they ring true today as well as they ring true, true tomorrow as they would did yesterday. A closed mouth does not get fed and you cannot feed a closed mouth. And with that, we will end tonight. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us and, uh, we're going to end with the best knock, knock joke ever. Knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs>